Welcome to the Northampton Planning Board meeting. This is a public hearing. It's on October 27th, 2022. We have Zoom um, participants too, but they're able pretty much just to listen to the conversations and see the plans. They aren't able to ask us or the um, applicants questions. Um, all those questions they had to send in advance um, to Carolyn Miss of the planning office. Um, so before we open up the site plan review um, for Prospect Place, we'd like to ask if there's anyone who wants to make a general comment to the planning board about items that are not on tonight's agenda, something that could be germane to planning in the city or anything else. Okay, hearing none, we'll move right into our site plan review for more than one curb cut. And it's a 40 hour review by Prospect Place Owner LLC, otherwise known as Valley Community Development Corporation, to renovate and create 60 units with site improvements at 737 Bridge Road, Northampton Map ID 18C48. Um, Carolyn, I wondered before we open it up to the applicant to give us a presentation, could you remind the board just real quickly the, the um, a summary of the 40R review and what that means for our deliberation? Sure. So 40R is the um, review procedure for properties that are zoned um, under the smart growth or 40R overlay district. So if you remember just recently, the city council um, adopted the overlay for this parcel as an expansion of what was already um, created. And the 40R review is um, peril is, is um, analogous to site plan review. So it's a simple, um, it's a simple majority. And it's supposed to be sort of a um, an accelerated path for approval to allow for development where the city has already established the locations of where where additional density and what makes sense for development to occur. Um, so as part of the state um, review of our zoning or, or the 40R overlay approval, they had to look at the criteria and and approve the criteria for 40R. What we really did was we copied everything from site plan and as it relates to the design criteria for the most part in the planning board review procedure, some of it included the elements that are in special permit, but converted those to site plan for the purposes of 40R review. So it's a simple majority approval and it's really not about whether their use is allowed, but how it meets those other criteria in the 40R review. Is it anything specific to affordable housing or? Uh, it's not. It's applicable to all uses that are proposed in the district. The only thing that then becomes relevant as, um, with respect to the affordability of any units that are built is that for every certificate of occupancy that's issued for an affordable, a deed restricted affordable housing unit, the state um, essentially compensates the city for this new density that's built above and beyond what the underlying density would allow. And um, only if it goes through the 40 r process and um, only if the unit is constructed. Thank you. So um, hearing all that, perhaps the, uh, what name are we going for under this application? The Valley CDC, otherwise known as Prospect Place. Would you come forward and provide us? Thanks. Good evening. Everyone. Good evening. 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 There we go. Um, we've got a, a couple of folks in our project team. First, I just want to um, clarify the, the owner is Prospect Place Owner LLC. Um, Valley is the majority owner in a partnership with a private entity. Um, those two individuals that may be on Zoom tonight, um, which is Amalfi Galloso and Mauricio Abascal, um, they are the partners on this project and, and make up the other half of Prospect uh, Place Owner LLC. 
Uh, for Valley tonight is myself. Um, I also have Alexis Breitniker here, who is our executive director. Um, and like I said, Laura is at home uh, following via Zoom. Uh, for our site designers, we have um, Berkshire Design Group, and I've got Rachel Lo Loeffler, sorry, and Jess Schnodendorf, close enough, uh, from Berkshire Design. Rachel and Jess, we'll just go with that. <laughs> Um, for a civil engineer, we have Stonefield Engineering. Uh, we have Jake Modesto here, and he'll be our civil, um, getting into the stormwater utilities and traffic. And then uh, via online, we have Austin Design. Tom Chalmers, I believe, is um, listening in via Zoom. So that makes up our uh, development team. And I'm going to give you an overview of the project. Um, and then uh, both Jake, Rachel, and Jess, they'll be getting into more of the details of the site plans and the, and the project application that is before you tonight. So just to give you some site context, um, I'm sure you all know the site, but just in case you do not, and for maybe people at home, uh, this is the former nursing home on Bridge Road. It's an existing 72,000 square foot building. Uh, two-story brick structure constructed in 1971. It has been sitting vacant since 2011 and deteriorating. Um, it, the, the site is 6.2 acre site. Um, there's two points of access currently. There's one off of Bridge Road right here and then another off of Hatfield Street. So two existing points of access. Um, what we love as affordable housing developers for this site is its location. You cannot beat its location in terms of its access to a PDA uh, bus stop, access to a bus line, um, really close access to shopping, um, schools, parks, hospital, bike trail, YMCA, and the Northampton Survival Center. It really is kind of in the middle of everything that our residents are going to need within walking distance. So to, that, to us, that's a great benefit of this property. Just to give you an overview of um, what we are proposing at this site. So we are looking to convert the former nursing home into 60 family apartments. That will be a combination of affordable and workforce apartments. We are looking to do a full gut renovation of the building. So we are leaving the building in place, leaving the footprint, um, but doing an internal renovation of the building. It very much needs it. Um, we're looking to do some modest exterior mod, um, modifications. We're still looking at what those may be, um, but essentially leaving the exterior of the building as it is, dressing it up a little bit to make it look more residential versus um, institutional, but generally leaving it as is. Um, we are going to be doing a major removal of um, hazardous materials, asbestos being the main one. Um, we were just notified actually that we received a grant from the underutilized um, properties program to do um, to, to pay for that asbestos removal. So that's um, something we just learned of this week. Um, we are also looking to reuse the site amenities as, as, as much as possible. So parking is going to remain the same, using the existing utilities in place, um, really just taking um, a heavy touch on the interior of the building, but leaving the exterior as, as, as much as possible, and then Adding, um, adding additional amenities as, as um, needed, which the, our civil and our site designers will get into in more detail. Um, we're seeing this as a huge opportunity to do some high efficiency um, mechanical systems for heating and cooling. We're looking to have this be a fossil fuel free building um, per the Northampton regulations and also looking to utilize this ginormous flat roof that we have of a building for um, PV solar panels. And we're also exploring geothermal as, a, as another um, form of heating and cooling for the building. So all things that are currently for exploration. As I noted before, we're looking to do 60 family apartments, um, combination ranging from studios to three bedrooms. The majority of the apartments will be of larger size, two bedrooms and three bedrooms. Uh, the uh, household incomes are going to be ranging from 30% area median income, which is the metropolitan statistical area for Hamden and Hampshire County, um, up to 100%. So just to give you a sense of what that means for a family of four, a 30% um, would be around $38,000 household income yearly. And then for 100%, it would be around 91,000. So that's about the range of the, of the tenants that we're looking for this project. Uh, management and staffing moving forward. Once the, once the property is redevelopment, redeveloped, we're looking to have a professional property manager on site full time. 
um, dedicated maintenance staff for the building and a resident services coordinator, which would work with the tenants to help them find the proper social services that they may need as they're coming into, um, into this uh, property. I should also wanted to just quickly mention um, for tenants, we are, all we are also looking to house some special populations. We'll have some units set aside for those coming out of homelessness. Um, all of the, all of the, um, the apartments will be visitable. Um, with somebody in a wheelchair, and um, we'll have a number of ADA compliant um, uh, apartments as well. So we've done, as Valley traditionally does, we do extensive neighborhood outreach before we move ahead in any of our projects. Um, and so we've had several on-site meetings and Zoom meetings. We had two in the spring, we had two in the fall. Um, Valley has met with some of the individual butters directly to discuss any concerns with the project. Um, and we've been providing updates to the project through the Ward 1 Counselor Listserv. So we've, we've tried to keep the neighborhood engaged and informed about what we are planning in our tents at the site. So we, through these different uh, meetings that we held on site and through Zoom, um, we had a number of um, comments that we received from the neighbors that we've addressed in the final plan set. So. The, the, the big one I think had to do in regards to site access. So our initial concepts, we were looking to have an additional driveway or a new driveway, closing off the driveway on Bridge Road and having a new driveway um, 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 prospect. And so we heard very strongly from the neighbors that that was not their preferred um, way to have the site circulate in terms of traffic. And so through multiple meetings with city, um, through uh, a traffic study that we commissioned to have done um, and uh, in cooperation with the city during a tech review, we've come up with a different alternative which reutilizes the existing entry off bridge road, but modifies it and, um, and our site design team and our civil will explain sort of what those changes are and how we've, we've made those changes. But that was the biggest, biggest comment that we heard from the neighborhood in regards to, to the, um, the pros, proposed concepts. Um, again, traffic was a concern. And as I noted, we had commissioned a traffic study. Um, and what we determined is that by keeping, keeping the entrance at Bridge Road and how we might be able to modify that in order to accommodate any traffic flow. So um, we looked at, and our plans are, um, we'll be presenting, providing a right turn out only out of the site under Bridge Road having a new left turn lane at Bridge Road with a new left turn only into the site and re relocating the entrance um, on Hatfield further down to increase the queuing of cars. So those are three um, changes. And again, the design team will get into the to more of the details of that. Uh, in terms of traffic signals, there was concern about a uh, higher um, traffic impact and the po um, possible need to have a traffic signal at this location. Um, as our traffic study showed and was in the um, application packet that you received, um, that the study showed that there was not going to be a demand um, that would require traffic light at this location. Um, another neighborhood uh, comment that we received at our, at our um, neighborhood meetings was a concern with noise and the volume of noise, uh, especially with truck traffic that was using Bridge Road as a cut through to get to the Hilltowns. Um, and so initially our site designs had more recreational space and common open space in the front of the site. And as a result of, um, we, we commissioned Berkshire Design to do a, a noise um, study of looking at this site in comparison to some other sites nearby and to, and to see what the volume of, of the noise was. So based on this, we actually reversed it and put the, um, the, the open spaces and the common spaces towards the back of the property where it's quieter. Another item that we heard about was pedestrian connectivity. We heard a lot of um, neighbors talk about how they use the site to connect to other areas of the neighborhood. So we looked at um, how the site was being used now, proposing a new sidewalk on Prospect, which we will also get into, um, and looking at how those connections um, from the site also go into the neighborhood to make sure that people still have the ability to access the site. 
Couple other things that we heard about was um, questions regarding drainage with, will there be new impervious surface? We're actually reducing the amount of impervious surface um, and we'll have new stormwater infiltration systems, which Jake will get into. Um, there was also a question and concern about the trees. There are a lot of beautiful specimen trees already on site. Will those be saved? And Berkshire will get into our planting plan and um, the majority of the trees will be retained and we'll be adding a significant amount of new plantings as well. There was also comments about the courtyards in the back and how they face the south and um, in the past when it was a nursing home, how clients, when they would go outside, there wasn't a lot of air circulation back there and it was self-facing, it was very hot. So we're looking to have a lot of plantings, sunshades, ways to sort of cool that down and make it a, a wonderful gathering space for the residents. That's it for the big picture from Valley. I'm going to turn it over to our design team and they will get more into the details about the plan. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. <clears throat> good evening. It's uh, Jacob Dessa with Stonefield Engineering. Can you hear me all right? That was good, Jacob. So I'm just going to talk briefly about the site in totality. Um, I think everyone's familiar with this. Just to locate everyone, we're on the south side of Bridge Road, orientation of the plan in front of you. That's how it's shown. Uh, it's important to note that we do have three frontages. The parcel does extend both to Hatfield, Bridge Road, and Prospect, with majority of our right-of-way actually being on Prospect. Uh, just over a 6.2 uh, acre parcel with the two access points. Uh, really, the intent of this application uh, is to keep what's there. Um, some of the modifications that we may look at really is, is taking a look at that. It's a 36,000 square foot building. That's the actual footprint with 72,000 square feet in totality. Uh, so the main use change is there. The building centrally located, switching out to be 60 units. Um, the first major change from a site layout standpoint is actually the front. We're removing that, that driveway, that pull-up area, the dropping off for the nursing home, and we're removing that uh, impervious coverage. What we're doing is we're replacing that with a small patio area and meandering sidewalks that are going to give that connection uh, to Bridge Road. Um, we're taking the rest of that impervious coverage and we're spreading it around the facility. Uh, and basically modernizing this building to a residential use. Uh, that includes the uh, areas banked off for the uh, HVAC systems, a multi-court surface. It's located to the west. So the AC units or conduit areas are located to the east and west side of the building. And then continuing to the west is the multi-court uh, area. Uh, that would be a future development, depending on what the tenants, you know, we'll call it the actual programming for that. In addition, we're adding two bike sheds with that impervious coverage located at the northeast corner and then to the rear of the parcel, almost at the rear property line. Um, you can see it's, it's denoted where the crosswalk is uh, centrally. Um, we'll call it down the main corridor uh, of the building. If I can point my cursor, hopefully everyone can see it's down here. So one and two when it comes to the bike shelters. Uh, this being a residential use, people have places to need places to park. So the application does propose really the remainder of uh, the parking areas to be reutilized as 80 parking spaces. That would give us a 1.3 par uh, parking ratio to the number of units. So uh, every unit will have at least one parking space. And then for every three, there's an additional after that. So there's ample parking spaces. There's seven ADA parking spaces within that 80 parking spaces uh, distributed to the north and to the south four at the front, three at the rear. In addition to that, within the 80, 80 um, uh, parking spaces on site, there are four EV charging stations located by that southerly bike uh, location that I mentioned before. In a two and two configuration, we'll call it a two now and a two later. So two will be built uh, and then two will be ready for uh, the potential use from the actual tenants. As far as access moving kind of out and away from the building, uh, the Hatfield right of way uh, access point uh, will be modified. We're actually adding several lands or several parking areas uh, located on the west side of the parcel. We're taking the Hatfield access point, moving it away from the Hatfield and Bridge Road intersection, lodging a larger queue in the right of way. Uh, it'll allow access in and out of the property. In addition, taking a sidewalk connection and taking it and connecting into the Hatfield right of way. Taking us along bridge, which I think is the major improvement when it comes from a site access standpoint. Really, we're taking the, the driveway and almost moving it 30, 40 feet uh, to the east so that the access point actually aligns a little bit better uh, through a through movement um, for the site. It's a left in, right in driveway uh, that'll be restricted when it comes to its size. It'll be a 12 foot wide lane. Um, the applicant understands the volume of traffic going through 
uh, the facility. Um, it's about even split in the AM and PM when it comes to flow through there. So what we're doing is two, two methods uh, to mitigate some of the traffic and the additional movements that would be into the property. We're proposing off-street improvements, which include a, a basically a dedicated left turn bay. So if someone was heading, it would be westbound on the plan going across the page from, from right to left. There will be a designated left turn bay so that through traffic uh, would not be impaired by anyone trying to make a left into the property. Uh, we've ran a fire truck through the, uh, the actual uh, facility to coordinate <clears throat> that with the new driveway configuration. And to prevent people um, from making that left turn, so we're actually removing a, a turn altogether, and we are putting in a physical concrete curb uh, with landscaping to ensure that no one's making that left out of there. It's really forcing everyone to make the right. So we have that improvement on Bridge Road, which I, I think at the end of the day is going to help improve some of the, the site circulation that's there and reduce some of the conflict points uh, that we have with this development. As we continue on Prospect Ave, are they allowed to cross the from? Uh, Street. No, from Hatfield Street headed kind of south. Well, yeah, I think that's Hat, Hat, Hatfield, like it going down towards Walmart. Are they allowed to cross there? Going straight across. Yeah. There's there's no there's no talk about restricting that access at this point. We we did the traffic analysis. That was one to two, maybe during a peak hour scenario. So the actual number of times that happens is actually quite limited. It was it was the left actually outs, which are unrelated to our site, it's just traffic that's there. So we're not changing any of the movements on the north side of that access point at this point. Um, that's within the Stantec review letter um, that that basically built in this, um, sorry, the Stantec um, traffic report that was built into uh, what we're doing. Yes. Just to clarify that, there, there's um, right now there's a left turn movement allowed mm -hmm. um, southbound on Hatfield onto bridge. So essentially that's not changing. So this is just lines it up so it's not offset and it's a safer across and so it wouldn't restrict. So given that you could still make a left onto a bridge going eastbound, you could still come straight across as well. But, but sorry, so when exiting the site, that concrete landscape area you're talking to forcing people right. You're not going to be able to exit the site and go straight through the oh, hat field. You can, yeah. you can, you can, you can right. enter this, this site. site, but you, you can't, can't go straight okay. exiting. Okay. But. You would have to hop several curves and make that left. So yep. we've done everything we can to make sure everyone's just taking a right out of here. Oh, okay. Yeah, of course. Turn your mic on. Turn your mic on there. Uh, where are the where are the residents going to enter? Uh, there's actually multiple entrances throughout the building. Um, so make sure there's one here. There's one uh, here, kind of on the north side, and there's several in the rear as well. So there's going to be different areas where or, um, uh, tenants can get in and out of the building. And what are you doing? Like my uh, my mother-in-law was in Alvo House uh, for for some time, and one of the problems there was that. Um, like the, the the number of entrances into the building in my mind made it so that there was sort of a a bad element could come and go very easily. So I think what we're talking about is like controlled access to the building. I think we talked about the management um, for that. I think that would be covered. But you can't. But you're not having like four people at all of those entrances. So like the problem is, is that you can ha literally have someone holding the door open for yeah yeah typically at our properties we usually have um one main point of access and then the other ones are emergency exits okay. so um i believe in this scenario depending I, I i believe it's in the rear is where the main point of entrance has been discussed for this property okay so that's not so it's one i i understand that there's emergency egresses that's yeah, that's yeah. separate from what i'm talking about yep. i'm saying that the main entrance so if someone were to park on this uh this i guess whatever the the prospect side on the side there on yeah the, the east they would have to walk all the way around mm -hmm. okay just to be clear i don't think we are restricting where they're putting the doors to this building i'm not restricting where we're putting the doors i'm just saying that that i know that from my personal experience dealing with a right. bad element it at Salvo house that was coming and going and causing havoc it was through the fact that you could go in and out of these doors 
think the main okay. door is probably right where the ADA spaces are. Okay. Well, yeah. Since they have to be the closest to the main door. Yeah, but there's different. Okay, let's, um, Sam, can we hold our questions from the board till he walks through most of the presentation? Maybe, yes. Thanks. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> so just taking this, we were talking about access points to and from the property. We're going to continue with the pedestrian improvements that we're making, which is actually on prospect. Uh, as part of the comprehensive plan, uh, the, this actually was uh, targeted to have uh, sidewalk basically extending all down prospect from our property and further south so there'd be actually a thoroughway a thoroughway uh, for access through the community so our applicant is, is basically doing that uh, over this 500 feet of, of uh, frontage along prospect we're adding a four foot concrete landscape or concrete uh, sidewalk all along that um, we're actually proposing integrating the additional pedestrian connection points uh, to the building so there's two in this location so in totality we'll actually have two on prospect one on bridge, one in Hatfield. So plenty of uh, pedestrian abilities to connect in and out. Obviously checking the box when it comes to uh, bike accessibility. This wasn't targeted as we'll call it the higher number of um, bikes through here, but with the applicant is still implementing a lot of bike storage and available um, for uh, tenant residents um, for later on use. So when that does, any of the bike improvements do happen, you know, this, this bill element will fit right in. Can you just clarify where there's bituminous and where is concrete sidewalk? So the concrete would be located on the prospect, which is on the right side of the plan. And what was proposed was the the uh, bituminous on the left side, which was on Hatfield. So that's what the DPW is looking to see is in the um, the left side there, the Hatfield. That was all. It was all concrete, but otherwise, it'd be a little patchwork for the new improvements. So Hatfield will be uh, asphalt, and then the new one on prospect will be all concrete. Hatfield will be asphalt. Correct. That's consistent with what's out there. Huh. And that's a DPW decision or? That was, Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, no, it was a recommendation within the letter that uh, was sent around. I think it was. Uh, I think it would be the opposite. Six. Six. Huh. It's existing. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, you look a little patchy because we're taking that driveway and moving it south. So any new sidewalk should be concrete in that scenario. It kind of looked a little patchwork. So the idea is to keep it consistent, at least on that frontage. Huh. I don't know who makes that kind of call, Carolyn. Well, we can go, it's, a DPW is recommending that modification and we can go through the DPW comments at, after the presentation. And yeah, and really that's that's the called above ground improvements. So I think the subsurface stuff when it comes to utilities, uh, again, removing the gas line that's located to bridge, that'll be removed as part of the project. There'll be a new service for the electrical at the rear of the building, a new transformer. Um, for the facility. We're reusing the water taps on Bridge Road um, for the facility and then refurbishing the sanitary lead uh, that does uh, exit the building uh, to prospect and been working with the DPW on, on all those items. Um, also from a stormwater standpoint, um, obviously the decrease in impervious coverage actually also decreases uh, the runoff. So with increasing pervious services that allows water to infiltrate into the ground, so we're adding an element of recharge naturally, and then reducing runoff rates uh, from the site. So from a, from a volume and from a rate standpoint, that's going down. In addition, from a water quality standpoint, it's the uh, TSS rule that we're actually implementing. There'll be two water quality units. So all the water that is captured from the site, from the um, the parking lot areas will be captured, sent through two water quality units that are subsurface. Those will then be treated and actually have a cleaner water leaving the site into the public system, uh, which actually is a drain that routes through from, from prospect uh, to bridge. So that's all on site, cleaning it. So from a quantity and quality standpoint, there'll be significant improvements um, from the development. It is a, um, a new facility. So we are proposing lighting fixtures. Um, it's going to go to our lighting design as much as possible. Everything has been directed downwards. These are downlit um, lights, uh, 30K, which gives that, that yellowy hue um, for the lights. They're LED energy efficient. Uh, just looking at the fixtures. Again, they're scattered around the property, directed inwards. The lighting levels are low. There's no glare off the property. They're mounted at 16 feet for the, um, the area lights. There's 19 of them. And then for the wall uh, sconces around some of the perimeter of the building to illuminate the sidewalk, there are 10 mounted between 10 and 12 feet varying around the building. So again, the idea is just to illuminate some of the sidewalk areas and the, um, in the courtyards, which Berkshire Design will get into a little bit. But that's the application from a civil standpoint. Um, I think the Berkshire is going to talk a little bit more about the green infrastructure that's being put in place. Thank you. 
So just as part of the process for folks, we'll hear the presentation from uh, the applicant, then we'll clarify a few things here from the board, then we'll open it up to the public for comment. Okay. Great. Um, I'm Rachel Leffler with Berkshire Design Group, and I'm here with it. Uh, we've been working as a team on this project. So she may pipe in here if, if I miss something. Um, as Jake said, uh, we are excited to be working with a great site. What's there today um, has a lot of significant trees with um, good, uh, good ecological value and great presence. When we were there on site walking around, we heard birds on, in, in some of the pine trees that were near the building, in spite of the noise that we heard from, from the traffic. Um, so for this project, uh, we are going to be removing some of the trees. There are 23 significant trees on site um, that are 20 inch caliper or greater. We're going to remove seven of those, and those are those are for for the purpose of the new um, bridge road safety access. We're going to lose three three honey locusts, some apples, and some oak trees for that new new point of entry. In addition. Um, We've looked at, we've walked the site and looked closely. Some of the trees have a bittersweet infestation that we'll be taking down um, for to help the trees. Some of the trees uh, needed a lot of pruning for under. Some of the branches were dead from those bittersweet um, methods. So the site is gonna get, get a little bit of a facelift and um, we're gonna be able to retain a lot of the existing character of the site. We're excited to be working with a lot of mature trees. Um, so as we think about adding new trees to the site, um, this, this drawing shows how the mature size, there's some existing oaks that we're going to retain on site that are really nice in this corner, some immature pines, some, these are the pines that we noticed the birds um, hanging out under one nice fall day, um, and a couple more oaks and maples. Um, as a site strategy, we're, we are going to be bringing in um, mostly New England natives, trying to focus on Massachusetts, Massachusetts natives um, and using plants for their functional quality of screening and habitat and, and bringing a little bit more diversity to the site. As a strategy, we are going to be keeping that open character of the landscape surrounding the building. Um, if the budget allows, uh, we are proposing a three foot high berm which is a landform um, at Bridge Road um, on the project side of the sidewalk. So to help mitigate some of that noise and create a little bit of screening into the site, that will be planted with um, sedges and grasses and um, really light shade trees like aspen and birch and hophorn. Uh, then as we move into the interior of the site, the edges of the building will have um, more, more screening, more, more evergreen shrubs and ground covers around to help with screening the residents from looking in and looking out. And then along Prospect Ave, we have applied a pretty dense planting strategy along that new sidewalk corridor. Um, what's there now are arborvitae that on, you know, on plan, they look lush and green, but when you get out there and you walk along them, there are quite a few bare spots that you can look right through. So that new sidewalk is a new opportunity. It really diversify that edge and um, create create a nice screen. So just to clarify, Rachel, are the Arbavita gonna, that hedge gonna be removed? Correct, yes. Um, and looking at this, this, this plan here um, shows the footprint of each tree and calls out each, each individual species. Um, the sections here, I don't know if you guys, see. the sections on the side show, let's see how you can get. You minimize the zoom. That? There you go. Um, so this this elevation is a what what someone from Prospect Ave would see looking at looking at the sidewalk, where there's a range of evergreen shrubs like shamrock and uh, mountain laurel um, with a bunch of um, flowering native um, shrubs intermixed um, with high bush blueberries and maple leaf fiber and uh, This section here shows what that would look like. So this would be traffic along Prospect Ave, the sidewalk, 
the planting border and then the parking on the interior site, again, giving that buffer between the parking, um, the sidewalk and the neighbors across the street. On the interior of the site, um, we have two courtyards existing that we are gonna be renovating and to provide different types of amenities for residents. Um, the courtyard on, on the right, we, we envision to be more of a reflective space with a walking path, seating nooks, and a, a landform in the middle planted with um, shade loving natives and um, service berry. So a gentle rise in the land, surrounded by vegetation, creating places for contemplation, reflection. We envision a resident being able to sit and read or think um, by themselves or with a friend. Um, in the other courtyard, we're, um, we're focusing on active play for small, small children that might, might live there or might be um, family members of residents. Uh, we have um, more of a natural theme with um, log stepping stones and uh, log climbing structures and a um, manufacturer's play structure with, with a slide and components for, a, for younger kids. <clears throat> These areas are then surrounded by areas for seating for parents also to observe and the area is fenced in with a four foot high cedar fence. We have a shade shut structure for this area also providing some shade for, for folks out there. The third area adjacent to that is a more of a gathering area. It's enclosed, it's a lawn area enclosed with, um, with uh, mountain laurel and other ground covers, um, some birch trees, and then picnic tables, um, including an ADA accessible um, picnic table for one area. And then as Jake mentioned before, we do have two areas of bike shelters and we have two strategies for the bike shelters. The area to the northeast of the building, we are proposing a, a standard off the shelf shelter that can hold up to 30 bicycles, um, fully enclosed with a roof. Then the area to the south of the of the building, we would look, um, this is a rendering by um, Austin Design, a custom built shelter that would also hold about 30 bikes, but also would hold a shed for any of the maintenance supplies needed for maintaining the site um, during the winter or, or summer. Look at this. Thank you. Thank you. I'm an eighth grade kid and I want to go to the Walmart. How do I get there without getting killed? Anyone can answer that. <laughs> this is a test. <laughs> So are you living here or are you? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. And I guess it is a little hard to see on this screen. Can you see the cursor? Yeah. So you could run out the front door underneath the shade sail, run down the sidewalk here um, and hop on the sidewalk in front of the berm and go. You're trying oh, to go to no, Walmart. Walmart is north. Oh. So up yeah, you... you're, you're gonna you're gonna take what's already in place. There's actually a lot of existing um, sidewalks, so we're connecting to Bridge Road. Bridge Road sidewalk continues all the way down. You're gonna you're gonna take Bridge right, Road, but, but Walmart is right north. The, 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 no we, one's we, gonna go down Bridge Road. So, I think uh, this is not a problem for you guys. I think it's a great project. The city needs to do something before someone gets killed. Every kid and teenager is gonna go on Hatfield Street, and I am one of the cars. All of us do that. Zip on Hatfield Street. There's no sidewalks. It's an incredibly dangerous situation we're creating. We need to do something. I mean, the city needs to. I think we're all familiar with that. And we all know that they haven't at this point addressed any kind of crosswalk, you any kind of yeah. signalized crossing. So the assumption is crosswalk that- Crosswalk and sidewalks. <clears throat> right. Potentially like 100 kids. Yep. In this, in yep. This building. Yep. So it's, it's a big concern for all of us, David. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other questions before we open it up to the public? Yeah, no, I, I want to go back to that. Where, where is the crosswalk? There is no crosswalk. Uh, there's, 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 it's bad engineering practice to have a mid-block crossing on a high traffic road. So that would just promote people from crossing uh, with high volume. So we try to actually avoid that, especially if it's leading to no sidewalk. Um, 
So, so the action, we, yeah. So walk down there yeah. Walk to the light. Walk to the light. Yeah. At Jackson Street. No, no one's then... going to do that. No. I, yeah. No 13-year-old's going to do that. Every 13-year-old's going to run. So, right. So, 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 it is. <laughs> so, David, we get it. We yeah. get it. So, should we close the hearing or should we? No. We, right. No, no. I'm just right. pointing so, out. I think, yeah. So, let's, no. So, but, but, and then I want to go back to this thing. So, she just said we're go, going out the front door, which was there but then i heard the front door was down at the bottom of the screen let me the correct the north side door which is exit only I no, they're, they're going to be access control. I believe you can get in and out of the, the two, the two primary, uh, the front and the rear. I think this is a bigger, like, I mean, I, I, as someone whose mother-in-law was terrorized. So by, uh, no, please, I'd like to finish. It was terrorized by this. I think that having multiple entrances that people can, can come and go in is, is a disaster waiting to happen. Yeah. And I think that uh, those types of things, when we're talking about a social social engineered project, it's our job as board members to actually put our put our life experiences in play. So I do have a problem with if the fact that you can enter in here, there, 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 there. There's Yes. So, so again, you know, for our own security and property management, um, we have locked entries. Residents have a key to get in, a fob, something like that, that gives them secure access. Um, there will be, I've received clarification from Laura that there will be um, keyed entry at the front and the back, but you need to key to get in. It's just not a, a free for all. Anybody can come and go. Residents have the ability in the way that we design our buildings is that there's security measures so that they buzz people in, they recognize them. Um, so we take our property management very seriously and that is how we, we manage the rest of our buildings that we are currently building. So and then that way, like there would be a record of who buzzed in who. I don't know if we keep records per se, but the, but the residents themselves, there's a, a typically um, a, a security measure, whether it's a, um, a video, or audio where they can recognize who is coming to the door, who is buzzing their door to be let in, and they let that their visitor in. But the building will be locked. And very, we'll need a key to get in and out. Very similar to situations at the lumber yard, live 155, uh, the newer um, complexes like that. So, I, I, so I don't know anyone who lives there. I knew, do know people who lived in Salva House, and I right. know people yep. who live in Michael's yep. house. And the one entrance in Michael's house limits any criminal activity that can go on in that property. So I we maybe everybody knows this already, but Valley currently owns six properties: five in Northampton, one in Amherst. Total of eighty-one units. We have around one hundred and sixty people currently. Um, we use a third-party property management company. They have offices in Florence. They have on-site staff. They are on our properties every day. Um, we have intercom systems. And in any of our newer developments, we're going to have intercom systems and security cameras. And somebody will be keeping an eye on that. So we we deal with this already and haven't had issues with any of our properties, some of which we've owned for 20 years. Okay. Other large concerns before we open it up to the public? you just tell us where the bus stop is? Bus stop is actually located if you're taking the right out. Uh, it's about 20 feet from the edge of that uh, curb radii. So I'm just going to go, if you can see the cursor right in here, just circling it. That's where the curb, it's already, it's already been installed. So yeah, it's, it's at the valley, also the valley bike yes, location. That, that, yes, can you same. blow up that street area for us that shows the left-hand turn, the right-hand turn, the new driveway, the bus stop? I am yeah, trying I think to so. go to that one little snip here. Give me one second, everybody. I have a PDF of your civil plans if you need them. Because, uh, you know, you must understand that's probably going to be our biggest concern. It's, I think this shows it. So you, this is the reconfigured drive, a little more detailed, uh, zoomed in. It was, it's one of the inserts from the, uh, the plan set. But what you're seeing is you see this is the exit that's proposed. You have that right turn bay here. And then right here is the, the bike shelter and the bus stop over here. 
just trying to circle it here. And as the bus pulls over, um, what's the, is there clearance on the other side of the bus? So, so that's actually, if you can look at the configuration here, um, that this has been a conversation this whole time or with DPW about this, actually the bay and the way it's been turned. So if in that scenario where someone is, the bus is pulled off there, uh, someone's actually able to sneak around um, uh, into the striped area uh, to maneuver through. Again, that, that's, it's a rare, it's a rare uh, occasion um, but this is, I think, the conversation with DPW to, to have this this configuration in particular. It, it's it's a quick one, you know. It, it, that that stop is doesn't have a high volume, so it's it's quick in and out if the bus is stopped. Well, it's sixty people. It'll have a higher. It, 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 well, for the for the, the the units don't necessarily generate the same number of people at any given time. So if there's one or two people, you know, at any time, it's a quick stop. Open the doors. They're on. Close off. Um, so, you know, it's, it, it's you know it's unfortunate. There's Valley Bike also. There's no bike lane on Bridge Road either way. So people will be on the sidewalk riding their bikes probably, and then trying to come into traffic. There's just we, we want to. We all love the project, but we're very very mindful of all the conflicts that we're kind of presenting here for pedestrians, bicyclists, and autos. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. Um, anything else before we turn it over to the public? I've got a bunch of other questions we can talk about about the design. All right. Well, at this point, then, thank you. Um, why don't we open it up to anyone in the audience who would like to come and speak either in favor or some point about the application? And if you just state your name and your address, that would be helpful for our minutes. Evening. My name is Michael K. Um, I am a resident of War Warburton Way, which is right behind where this project is being done. <clears throat> for 45 years, I lived on Prospect Avenue. I just sold that house and moved over to Warburton Way. Um, I was elected president of the Warburton Way Homeowner Association. So I am here in regards to talking about impact on Warburton Way or Prospect Woods. And first of all, my opening statement, I wanna congratulate you folks for putting this together. I mean, I've looked at that, matter of fact, a hundred years ago, my mother was a resident at that nursing home. So I knew the facility. I've lived in North Haven my whole life and very familiar with what you guys are doing. I compliment you. But um, having said that, um, where the traffic flow that everybody's so concerned about, uh, one of my issues was having a, a curb cut on Prospect Avenue. I see that's not going to occur according to what I'm seeing here tonight. It's just going to be on Bridge Road. Uh, I will say that the traffic count, if you've done one on Bridge Road, is horrendous. Uh, coming uh, down from Florence towards Northampton. And that's where the primary entrance and exits are going to be to that facility. Um, and as you stated, George, that it's going to get a lot busier once the residents are there. Um, the controversy right now with that bus being there and people entering exiting and a car trying to get out of that facility uh, looks like it could be a problem I'm not saying it is i'm just saying it could be the the residents that are going to be on prospect avenue uh, are going to have a whole enlightenment in regards to when the trees are taken down and that sidewalk is put down uh, safety wise, as far as the sidewalk going down Prospect Avenue, I can, I agree 100%. But the other factor I have with our location for Prospect Woods is one of our concerns is with all that traffic flow that is going to happen at the facility, that everybody likes to look for a shortcut. And the shortcut may become our facility, meaning where they're going to try to cut through from Hatfield Street over to Prospect Avenue to bypass getting near that area. We're worried about our traffic flow in regards to our residents walking from unit to unit 
in regards to having the traffic build up and use it as a cut through. So uh, I just wanna, uh, as a, a person who just paid a lot of money to buy a unit there, uh, I'm protecting my own personal investment as well as being president of the group and protesting, protecting the other 34 units that are in that place. Um, this is the beginning. I realize that it's just getting started. This is a project that's probably not going to hit the ground for another couple of years, but this planning part of it is where you come in. And I, I just want to say, be on record, that uh, I'm concerned in regards to that traffic flow problem. And I'm not looking at having a gated community in regards to shutting off Prospect Woods uh, so that the cars can't go through there. But for the future, it's it's something that we would look at. But I just wanted to uh, be here as a, a concerned citizen, and uh, I'll leave you my card with my information so you have the spelling. Thank you. Prospect Woods is the development on Warburton Road. Yeah. Oh. And and Ms. Kaling, right now there's signage at both entrances to Warburton Way that says Private Drive. Correct. Right. Correct. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't say keep out. But it says it's a private drive. Right. Yeah. But we do have a, once in a while a car will zip through there. Yep. And uh, and it's, it's like I said, right now it's at a manageable level. Right. Uh, but their concern is the impact this will have in the future. Thanks. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Please. Hi, I'm MJ Adams. I live at 155 Pleasant Street. This is a fob. I use it to get in and out of my building. It feels very secure, and I'm very happy to show anybody how it works. Um, I want to just speak highly of this project. I think Valley Community Development Corporation does high-quality developments. I'm mm -hmm. a neighbor to the lumberyard downtown. Uh, this housing is critically needed. Um, my father spent his last days on that site in the year, uh, and I think in 2003, 2004, I'm very familiar with it. I'm really delighted to see that it's moving forward, that there's going to be some additional housing built there, and that that building that has been a real blight on that corner is going to be put to good use. So thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? I'll uh, note that there is a couple of letters that the planning office received in support of the application. I don't think there were any letters that were kind of opposed to the application at this point. So, um, and those are in our record. And I think most of the planning members have read that. Okay, doke. Well, then, um, we'll come back to the planning board questions at this point. Um, why don't we hold on to the uh, the conflicts on Bridge Bridge Street, Bridge Road for a little bit? Is it Bridge Road or Bridge Street? Before? Right. Road, thank you. Um, maybe that's something we could also ask the city to do is for once God. change those names. Yeah. Um, any other? I, Mr. Kaylin, I was just here from Warburton Way. I know that there's a long fence on that south part of the property. I imagine that's going to remain and that belongs to this applicant, that long fence that separates on the south side. That's going to remain. Okay. 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 Other questions from the planning board members? It seems like it seems like a great project. It, it sort of it, it, it seems like a great project. Um, you know, obviously we're we're not talking about uh, the Bridge Street uh, sidewalk situation, but um, obviously we'll just have to the city will have to change some of its priorities and about where it builds some sidewalks now. Good luck. I have a question, George. Um, the, what are the four little pads that are on the exterior of the building? 
there's there's four little round of yeah of round the so those are actually the banks uh for the ac and hvac systems okay the i thought they were shown on the roof the condensing units were shown on the roof no so that's going to back and forth right now we want to call what we call a, a worst case scenario it's on the ground uh it's showing screen um the intent we're trying to work out the system to put some of that on the roof um but right now where we're at right now, so it's on the ground okay so they'd be all of the units would have their ac um units in one of those four locations so there'd be quite a bit quite a bit in each of those locations yeah. If that's as small as we can, we can get it's been a back and forth. Like oh, I, there's hours, yeah. there's hours and hours of conversation. I've probably been part of like half of it, but it's, yeah, it's been a lot of conversation how to reduce the amount of fines overall. Sure. Part of the challenge too also is to have this fabulous three feet roof to put PV solar on. Right. And if it's that real estate for mechanical systems, then you're losing the ability to put PV. Having an all electric building, we want to maximize the PV as much as possible to save our operating costs in the future. So it, it, there has been, yeah. as Jake said, hours and hours and hours and <laughs> yeah. hours of conversations on how to best get the most highly efficient uh, um, system that we can afford to, to, to put in these buildings. Does look like you are showing some shielding around it, though, some planting it is, around it. it. If it it's, ends up having to be on the ground, the idea was that it would be it would be um, buffered. Yeah. The screen. yeah. Okay. Thank you. So with those with those spaces there. Like the apartments that are the the units that are would be in would that take away from the number of units that you could have because there wouldn't be windows there? No, no, no. no. Um, while we're on electricity, I think you mentioned that there would be four EV charging stations. That is correct. Sixty spaces given where we're going with electric vehicles. Do you think that's sufficient at this time? Um or is it a cost factor? You're not, I know you're not doing a lot of work on the parking lot surface. Um, so I, I think it's a demand at this point. So right now, we're, we're going, it's going to be two now. Oh, okay. Would you come up so we can kind of get it to the Zoom? Thanks. Carol. Yeah, no problem. Um, so it's, it's a demand situation. Right now, what we're doing is we're stubbing for four. Two will be built right away, and there'll be another two bank for later in case the demand goes up. Um, so I'm sure if it's more and more the demand goes up, you know, more would be added. But at this time, it's two, two for, for now and then two for later uh, if the demand comes up. And that's four spaces. Four total. In, in you know, we'll say if if it's there. Yeah, the unit is the unit a single space unit? So it's, it's a it's a double space. So what so it's one it's one package um for two spaces. Yeah. Two spaces right. now and two spaces later for a total of maybe four. Correct. Yes. Yeah. They're going to install any, um, you know, condo or whatever for uh, potential. I think you'll probably need more. Yeah, yeah. So that there, there. That's what the two is for. So we're one. The one, the one is being installed right now. The conduit for the second, the second one is being installed as well at the same time. I think we'd like to request more. It's four, two right now for sixty spaces. Doesn't really seem to be adequate. Mm -hmm. I would like to request a few more. If you're just stubbing up, I don't think you have to install them now. But I I think it'd be important. We'll talk with the applicant. Yep. Caroline, can you remind us what the standards that's for, are? That's for a new parking lot, which this might not. Yeah. Oh. This isn't cool. a new parking lot. It's a parking lot for a new use. For more than 25. Yeah. For more than 25 parking spaces for new yeah. lots. Um, I think it's one per 15 parking spaces. Um, but I'm pulling that up. But yes, it's for um so that would be the fun. creation of a new that parking lot. Right. So we meet the standard right. under the zoning, even though we have a you're meeting the standard, oh. correct. Okay. Oh no, wait, they don't have 60 spaces, they have 60 units, they have 80 spaces. Thank you. So I think six would be closer. Did you follow that math? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I think what we could 75. do is, um, you know, stay on plan where we would we would provide for two, and then we could potentially stub out for an additional two to have six potentially. I think you know we have to see where the demand is. We don't know how many of these tenants are actually going to have cars. Appreciate that. So yep. do, these are low income tenants, and so we we tend to find that most of the time the the parking ratio is a half a space for unit um because that's that's how many people have cars so i think we would want to kind of wait and see to see where the demand is first but i think it could be easy enough to put the the, the conduit in place right 
Right. And, and I think part of our thing, a part of our planning board uh, charge is also to look down the road five years from now, 10 years from now, you do have workforce housing there. It's not all low income. Sure. So there will EV, hopefully vehicles will come down in price. Um, we just want to make the sure technology will completely change uh, in 25 years and we'll be yep. flying. Maybe you're, <laughs> yeah, we can only hope. Um, while we're talking about this area, it looks like the ADA space there is sharing with one of the EV spaces, which I don't think I've ever seen before. Yep. Would you consider separating them? So you have just an ADA space, so we just EV spaces? The number of ADA parking spaces. Again, in case someone was uh, handicap accessible in that location, the EV station is not only um, we'll call it be ready for EVs, but it's also handicap accessible. So the idea was, was not to double dip in what's required. We far exceed the number um, for ADA parking spaces just the Northern Bank. It's this is just making sure that that space is also accessible. So that's so only an, someone with an ADA plate with an electric car can park there. Uh, that would be because it's it's a residence. We actually would be the applicant would be able to pick that as part of the management company. So if if that's the scenario, you know I'm sure that 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 in space in particular would be assigned. So it just seems odd to me. It's, it, is com it is common in a lot of bylaws is to have 5% of the actual EV spaces uh, to be ADA accessible or ADA ready, um, same as there we'd have EV ready spaces. So it is in line with what we're seeing around the country um, mm -hmm. is to have one of those available. Um, and the intent is not to, you know, limit EV. The intent is to make that more accessible. The, the applicant is not trying to get out of putting EV space or having that used. It's, it's just making it more, we'll call it, you know, renter friendly. So is that how it will be striped when it's constructed? At this time, yeah. Yeah. So under the current design, there's one EV spot. If you don't have an access, an ADA no. tag, there's one spot you can use. If that was assigned, that one would have to be assigned in particular. And the striping, again, we could remove that if that's the board and clients. It's it's not a, a sticking point. It should just to be we call it compliant and follow industry trends. Yeah, to me, I would you know, have the access aisle for an ADA space, but just have it for EVs. Because otherwise I don't, you'd have to fulfill both requirements to park in the space. And we have seen projects like this, usually the, the number of parking spaces are about one per unit. So you're saying it's half a half a space per unit sometimes. Um, so this does seem like a lot of parking for this um, for this use. I'm wondering why only 60 bike spaces for 60 apartments. That doesn't seem like enough bike storage to me personally. If we have multiple bedroom apartments, families, um, I just I think we might need more bike storage. I think the hope is to start with 60 and then adjust over time to meet the demand. I mean, um, if you if you encounter that you're maxing out your bike parking, is that something that you guys would be willing to consider in the future? Yeah, accommodating. We wouldn't want to build 90, 90 parking spaces to only have half of them used on site. Just to clarify, you don't have to have covered storage. You could also have bike storage that's not sheltered. Um, so I don't know if that's what you're getting at, Chris, is, you know, because the requirement, there is a requirement for sheltered storage based on units, but it, you're um, meeting that with the number. So any additional ones wouldn't have to have a structure for them. I don't know how it's going for kids. I mean, because kids' bikes, they obviously very small, but they take up a whole space is there something we can do for kids i'm looking at you because you're no and if you go around the complexes that we have in the city you see most of the bike storages are maxed out um and and because often what happens is they don't only put bikes there but they put um large wagons there they'll put different kinds of things and i guess <clears throat> the last um shelter you showed us on the south side it was a bike shelter in combination with a storage facility for not lawnmowers i assume you have a contractor to do that but some kind of so again that concerns me a little bit that that 
storage facility may leak over into the bike shelter too. Um, um, which and other other projects we have had a need for things like um, salt, um, salt for on property management, sometimes hoses, sometimes rakes. Some some of that may be if there's an offsite uh, landscape maintenance company, they may be providing that. But it it is nice to have that capability. Um, so if there is anything that would require outside storage, it's already thought in on the plan. Yeah. So. You know, I, I I appreciate that you think down the road, if the demand calls for it, we'll address it then. But that's the hard part for the planning board. Unless we ask you to do it up front, it just may not happen down the road, whether it's an EV station or a bike shelter or more planting. So um, I'm not sure what our compromise is, is to ask for some unprotected bike stations, but because there's uh, people won't really want to be bringing their bikes inside the house. There's no personal storage space other than in the apartment. Um, bikes do get ruined if they stay out in the rain and the snow. Um, I don't know what that cost factor does to the applicant of adding another shelter. There's certainly enough open. There's certainly enough space around the project to to add one. The shelter, I think it's it's probably a product of operating the site and making this actually uh, friendly to the renters. It's a rental facility. So as much as people are living there, there's going to need to be a need to draw people to this. So yep. if in a scenario, like again, this is a man, it's a third party managed, they're going to try to have we'll call it the additional improvements, the EV charging stations, if it's required uh, and in a scenario where we're, we're filled with biking parking spaces, that means everyone basically would have a car, everyone have a bike they're going to implement that to bring more people or bring people in. At some, some point, someone's going to leave. If those bike parking spaces are filled, they're going to implement that as part of their improvements for the facility. As, as it's just what you do as a management company to ensure that you're, you're drawing in, uh, you know, renters. It's, it's part of the checks and balances um, as part of one of these applications. Yeah. So I, I also just want to clarify, I mean, no, they have um, uh, the, their demand for parking, they're saying, is 50% of typically what a residential unit would have, which they've shown, and it, it, they have other sites around town that have that. Um, they're also far exceeding our bike standard. So I'm not sure, our bike storage standard, and they and all of it is sheltered. So that's well above what's required by the zoning, um, in addition to providing um, 60 bike spaces, that's well above what's required. Um, so I think, um, you know, if you, um, the other pieces management that they're describing. So if there are bikes that are sort of strewn everywhere on the property, that's probably going to be something that they're going to want to address in terms of, you know, essentially corralling them and putting them there. I just, um, would um, caution about requiring some additional number of bike storage spaces when the zoning doesn't dictate that. Is it possible to just uh, have a plan in place for if you guys were going to, in the future, needed to build a, a spot, you could put like you'd have you'd have a a place in place or a site where you could put this uh, build out. Well, well, I, I would say that the site is pretty generous in terms of available real estate for something like this. So I'm not sure if we would want okay. to put it on a plan as of right now. It's not like it's a a tight constrained urban site. There's plenty of lawn and there's plenty of open space, and I think. Often what we like to do is we like to see how um, sure. tenants are utilizing the property. So if we if we see that there is a location where it seems to make sense to put additional um, bike storage, then we would we would accommodate that at the time. Okay. Um, could somebody point out often one of our, our 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 things that we look at is the the recycling in the refuse container? Um, could somebody point that out to us on the design? So we have a we have an enclosed dumpster enclosure here 
on this corner of the property. Um, it would be screened with a cedar fence and a gate. It's right here. Okay. Yeah, um, and it aligns for a, a front-loading hauler. Jake and his team tested out the circulation movements to make sure that it could um, accommodate that. But the hauler would come in, we could access um, each of those dumpsters, and then and exit through the site. And that's the landscape buffer on the corner on Prospect that'll... Yeah, so we continue to have um, buffer there. There are two existing mature pine trees that will be retained also to help screen screen that. Um, and then we still have the, there's a maple grove buffer also existing behind it. Are there trash rooms in the building or... Are there, are there trash rooms in the building or are people walking across the site to do that on a daily basis? Is it, do we individually dump our trash in the containers or is it managed centrally in the building? Um, our other properties that are smaller um, and people are going to come down the house. Yeah. I, I quite often don't know the standards. Yeah. Sure. I don't recall there being rooms within the building design at yep. this point. Um, so I would presume that the case would be that people would have to bring their, their refuse outside. Okay. Their and, their and, and you size this somehow with the industry experts. 60 units is a lot, so maybe three, four large containers. And that enclosure will be large enough to manage that. Okay. The industry experts. United Waste and others. Um. Before we got into stormwater at all, I was going to ask Carolyn, who just stepped outside, to talk about the DPW comments, um, which I haven't seen at this point. But. Okay. Um, not that I remember seeing. Would you like to ask that? Yeah. Could you describe quickly what the plan is for snow removal on uh, and or storage on the site? Here. No up and down, up and down. That, that's okay. We're sharing the stand tonight. Yeah. Um, no. So the idea of this is it's going to be snowmobile. It's going to be simply pushing uh, certain spaces. There's plenty of open space, plenty of green space. So we're going to be pushing these into areas uh, designated. Some of the areas you can actually see on the north side. So you'd, uh, someone would come in off of Bridge Road. They'd be able to push it um, as you continue directly. I guess be plan right uh, as you go. We'll call it para perpendicular um, to the building frontage. Per parallel with the building frontage across. Uh, let me see if I can point to it. Up in here, there's areas here, there's areas in the locations and other locations throughout the property. So there's plenty of areas to push snow uh, away from these, these, uh, these parking spaces. Again, part of third party management of the facility, that's all gonna be taken care of for the residents. Um, Carolyn, you said there were some DPW comments. Um, DPW uh, is typical asked to have revised plans uh, submitted at least 15 days uh, before requesting a building permit uh, to address um, comments that they had about detail sheets, the site plan, um, connect, um, um, clarifying connections. There, uh, a couple of the um, more specific comments relate to the sidewalk along Prospect Street um, that they're showing that it come it is to be installed against um, bituminous curb and DPW um, won't allow those two materials don't work well together. So they're uh, proposing three alternatives to what's shown on prospect. That would be either granite curb um, up against um, cement concrete or um, installation of uh, bituminous um, concrete or offsetting the sidewalk by 12 inches from the back of the curb so that there's a green strip between. Um, they're, they also made comments uh, uh, related to the alignment of the sidewalk, because if you see on the plans, it curves around the um, utility poles, and there are three utility pole, 
three to four utility poles along that whole stretch. So their recommendation is actually just to, at any rate, pull uh, so you have a straight line of sidewalk, just align it with the back of that pole. So, and that would also accomplish the 12 inch sort of separation from the back of the curb. Um, so um, that is the, those are the comments about the sidewalk. They also um, recommend um, consideration of putting a crosswalk um, and ramps at Allison Street, so which is before the southerly end of the property boundary um, to allow safe um, crossing there. There's no crosswalk between prospect, I'm sorry, bridge, road, all the way down to the bike path. So this, by putting a crosswalk there at Allison, um, it would allow safe crossing for kids to get to Jackson Street School because there's an access at the end of Allison um, right into the backside of Jackson Street School. Um, there is not, but it's a dead end street. And so the idea would be just as kids do now, that they'd be walking at the edge of the street or in the street because of the low traffic volumes on that short um, cul-de-sac. HBW is okay with installing ramps and, and crosswalks to streets with no bag rocks in there? So it's not ideal. Um, there have been other places where that's ha where that's happened. Um, the one closest example that I can think of is actually at the intersection of Jackson Street and Prospect um, and Woodlawn, um, where there's a ramp that goes up into Child's Park um, that's not connected to a sidewalk. So um, you're right, it's not ideal, but creating a safe crossing and landing on the other side um, would also benefit from, you know, having a safe place for kids to get, because that's going to be the desire line anyway to go to school. Um, so we're asking the applicant to install that crosswalk and the curb cut on the other side. Yes. And so here's the question. Um, th so they're proposing a sidewalk to the edge of their property. It may make, I mean, the board can evaluate whether it makes sense to terminate the sidewalk there at the crosswalk. And in, instead of continuing that um, cement concrete all the way to the end with nothing, you know, it would just essentially terminate at the next property. And the city could certainly take it up at that point and connect to the bike path, but they could also do that if it ends sort of not quite at the southerly um, edge of the property. Right, because the, eventually there is a sidewalk on Prospect, but it's on the east side of Prospect. Correct. Like a block or two later. Several blocks, yeah, I think. I don't even know where to start with this because this is like a major planning DPW non-communication happening life or death issue. I mean, we're like four blocks from where the biker was killed by Child's Park. My kids cross Elm Street, and there's the same situation where like a crosswalk to a non-sidewalk situation, people don't stop, people are in a rush. At the same time, kids are waiting for buses. This is not really about this project. This is a great project. <laughs> I mean, this is a major problem, and someone's going to die. I mean, it's a major problem that needs to be addressed by the city. I don't know how that happens. I don't know how DPW works or makes decisions or doesn't make decisions. Um, I don't know. Along Jackson Street, there's, I think, five or six feet wide concrete sidewalks, and they're not big enough. Kids ride bikes, and I agree. Like, don't curve the sidewalks around the utility poles because kids on bikes, it just doesn't work. You just get them, make them straight. I don't know. This is, you're recognizing that this is not, 100% of vehicular community by not putting parking spaces. That's right. That means people are walking and riding bikes. When I look at the site plan, it does not look like a pedestrian friendly environment at all. It looks like a parking lot with a building in the middle. So I know you're operating under a lot of constraints. I get that. And this is an existing site and we want to have housing and this kind of housing specifically. I don't know what to do to make the city put more sidewalks and make things safer so we don't get i don't want dead kids you know? so you know as an example for many years the planning board has and the zoning requires sidewalks along the frontages of any applicant's property that's coming forward in front of the planning board and there have been countless situations where the applicants have built sidewalks that just end at their property because 
eventually either the next property is going to go or the city will then be able to invest and continue that sidewalk. I mean, that's actually what's happening DOT, in this case, DOT finally did it up to from Damon Road up to the Walmart Plaza because you could see there was a desire line and the city kept saying you got to each project, you know, Walmart or Big Y had to put sidewalks and DOT didn't like it at first. And then it just sort of forced their hand. Okay, we're going to put a sidewalk here. So that's, unfortunately, that's sort of the way sometimes it happens where the property owner installs the sidewalk and starts that, essentially starts that conversation. Okay, what's the next piece? Um, but I think looking, you know, sort of, setting aside what the city um the deficits the city has in terms of pedestrian infrastructure this project how can we how can the board ensure that the project um creates as many safe pedestrian and bicycle um access points and and um transitions as possible and so the um, this is why we're sort of recommending that instead of ending in the sidewalk, just stopping it at the edge of the property, that it actually creates a safer access point for the users of this property and other people, certainly in the public right of way. So that makes a lot of sense to me. But the like this, what was the word? Uh, um, Allison. Allison. <laughs> like, would is putting it there like we're if the goal is to have some other either the state or the city or some other development continue this continue this thing forward is allison the right street for that or is it just the right like slow street right now well i i think it's the common way that children are going to walk to to school to Jackson Street like Jackson right now is there back right now yeah well, Jackson there's another, Street School there's another back way off Blackberry Lane too which is equally that's what I'm, I'm asking but it's farther down so are there yeah. other ones that would make more sense if if they're going to put a, a ramp is that the right yeah right. I, I don't think there's a sidewalk on Blackberry Lane. there's not um okay. so I, so I personally think we should do both there should be that crosswalk going over to Allison, and the sidewalk should extend all the way up to the next property. Um, that's not Warburton Way, but just, yeah, continue the sidewalk all the way, but have that crosswalk. Right. Otherwise, the next development won't put a sidewalk. Right. Applicants should take DPW up on their offer to install bituminous sidewalk along the bituminous curb, because DPW says they can do that. So that would save them a boatload of money on Prospect Street. You mean because of the material for cement concrete? Because we do require that as part of um, all new sidewalks should be cement concrete. It's really, it's not as, it's also not as durable and this is going to get a fair amount of use. I don't know. What, uh, by two minutes. Two minutes yeah. yeah, right. I don't know. I mean, we have, we have, I don't know how, when construction starting, but there's a couple of years before this is actually going to be here with people moving in. We are creating a very dangerous situation, a what we call an attractive nuisance of the many children who are going to be very happy to live here wanting to cross Bridge Road, road to Hatfield. At a very diff yes, and, and get onto Hatfield. I mean, DPW has, I don't know, two years to put a sidewalk in, I think, uh, really is what it comes down to. I don't know how so possibly we make them do that, but <laughs> that that is a huge project. I don't know if you've looked at that Hatfield Street that had that goes Just across the large ravine mm. um, with a huge culvert underneath there. It's uh, a gas line 2D and a gas line. It's 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 it's, it's not undoable because you're right. Nobody wants to see anybody get hurt. And that is going to be the way that bicyclists are going to go. They're going to try to cut across there and zip down a bit. Or they're going to River Valley Market, wherever. It's a tough, tough intersection. Um, and there's no sidewalk anywhere on Hatfield Street. No. no. Oh, well, another Cook Ave. On Hatfield now. Yeah. yeah. And there's a curve there as cars come around the corner and a hill and grade. Yep. So it'll be urgent after the tragedy, I guess. Is that what we're saying? Well, I mean, that's really what we're saying. It's big. That. It's not our decision anyway, so I don't know why Allison, I'm harping on it. I just think it ought to be made clear to someone at DPW. So that's let's, what's let's gonna can we can we resolve the the Prospect Street issue first, and then we'll move over to Bridge to Bridge Road. I actually want to go to the Allison one, right? Which is the one 
which is the street because uh, i guess there's one other cut through which is the one that is the wider like the the image that i saw here allison seemed like a very narrow street well, well and the good thing about allison saying, is it's across it's, from the property it's across with it. so you can but, actually but i guess what it. i'm saying is that in the future could allison have a sidewalk or is it too narrow that's that's what i'm like which which of the streets is the wider street I don't, maybe they're the same i i'm not a cabbie so i can't I don't know. we can only request the sidewalk to the, edge I, of the I, under, I understand that but, but we're, we don't know sam and yeah and, all right and allison might be a bigger smaller street but also it's a it's a it's a dead end so there's not any traffic really okay. so it's right. safe to drive to it. bike it. No, no, no. Hey, that's so alice Oh, it's like an end to you, and then they're going to walk through that snow. So, um, I, I agree with what you said about the sidewalk and the cross. Continue it. So, now the issue is do we ask them, as uh, Chris's suggestion, just to go on a bituminous sidewalk or to stay with a concrete? That's not my suggestion. Sorry. That's what DPW wrote. The DPD said, but maybe they're not. They're, they're providing different alternatives to say if you build to the curb edge, you either need to replace the curbing and put granite. Or bituminous to bituminous, right. and so or um, twelve inches offset, which would then push it so that it's not a zigzagging sidewalk, but it would be a line, a straight shot sidewalk. And if you're going to do that anyway, I mean, then they're not making a recommendation about material. Is that a parking? Is that decrease your parking? If you push it all to the no. way, no, no, it's no. all that hedge. They're going to move. So yeah. if, yeah. if we move it. In, to in towards the call the inside of those properties, it would actually protrude a little bit into the property. So we have one or two foot. I've already talked to David about this. An easement would be put in place for maintenance. Um, the applicant would prefer to work with DPW through, through a few of these things, um, just because the way the markets are, it's it's trying to like pinpoint everything what's going to be most effective um, use of that um, area. I'd like to work with DPW. It's not like the applicant is not willing to put in a sidewalk there. Um, the means and methods we'd like to work through. And then the board's discretion on the, the crosswalk. Um, but we'd like to work with, with DPW through that point. I'm sure you'd like to work with DPW because they don't care. We don't want DPW. I think it's a planning board's jurisdiction to determine the materials and the location. Yep. Two minutes asphalt then for, for the sidewalk. Then. <laughs> that would be your preference <laughs> because of the cost factor. Noted. Right. right. But the durability of the concrete is much longer, the concrete mm -hmm. sidewalk. Mm -hmm. And we really do push for that in all other developments. Um, yep. So. Um, so I don't know if you are. Yes. You want me to keep going? Or, um, okay. Um, so I think um, Jake uh, commented about the um, curb material on Bridge Road. DPW just wanted clarification about what the curbing was. Um, and then Clarification about the pervious pavement um, called out in seven parking spaces um, versus whether it's permeable pavers or um, pervious pavement. So that that's just a detail sheet clarification. Um, I would just say that de um, Department of Public Works did issue a stormwater permit. So of course that is um, wrapped into the stormwater uh, permit um, as well. So that's um, that's been issued. Um, separately um and they were privy to the whole notion of these uh containment um in-ground containment things that are purifying the water not decreasing the volume but yes so that's all part of the stormwater plan yep um so they're noting about the details that um and these are issues that um, may be appropriate for, to work out but the crosswalk detail on site is um is or I'm sorry, the crosswalk details is suitable for the internal use only. They do not recommend a crosswalk across their driveway. It's a crosswalk striping across the driveway entrances because crosswalk striping should really only be across streets and not driveways. Um, and the Hatfield, Hatfield and the Bridge Road. Um, and... Um, then there's just some details about the um, stop and do not enter signs and, and making those that so, so so how does that that last one like the crosswalks yeah, across the direction just say that do we have any I mean there's a bus stop right here to not have striping um yeah I mean 
Yeah, I think that's just, it doesn't follow the um, traffic control standards. Um, so um, there have been other instances where there's cross, there's striping across um, driveways, but you know, that's, they're just commenting on that as not being um, uh, the design standard in the design standard manual. Haven't we requested other kinds of pavement treatments that provide the same thing as striping? to allow for, because there's a sidewalk on either side of that large entrance on Bridge Road, right? That right. kids will be using. There's also an island, you know, a there's separate. A, right, there's an island so. that they have to walk up and over. Uh, right. Or a through, actually, through. It's a, yeah. yeah. Yep. yeah. Um, so I, I want, and, and in many places we've asked for some kind of treatment, whether it's a crosshatched um, pavement or it's not exactly a crosswalk per se, a striped crosswalk, but yeah. I mean, typically, that. I think it's because they're uh, so. For example, um, entrances where there's a commercial entrance and you have much more vehicle, um, heavier vehicle traffic and um, and more volume. Um, I mean, larger vehicles and higher volume. Um, so yes, if you if you feel like it's important. You know, you can certainly approve the plans. That way, I'm just telling you what DPW's comments are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then um, they just wanted some updated sewer um, and water details. So that's um, about it um, for the DPW comments. Just out of curiosity, when did you get these comments? Um, they today. One other, one other question. I I know that you're. Or, when are, when are you going to have an idea of what it's going to look like on the on the outside? This rendering. Uh, well, but then they said that those are. I mean for the exterior of the yeah. building. Yeah. So we're working with our architect, and we're uh, have pulled in a couple of other architectural designers to give us some ideas. Um, we're looking at. We want to make sure that we've got something that will last. So from an operation standpoint, so we've thought about painting the brick a different color. Question is, you know, can we find a, a paint material that's not going to chip and, and have us to repaint often? Um, we're looking at different color treatments. We're looking at changing window sizes. Um, so there's a lot of different options that are on the table. Essentially, the brick is going to stay. It's just a matter of how we we um, dress up sort of around the windows, whether it's pops of color or whether it's something a little bit less. Again, we're thinking about operations and long-term maintenance, and we want to make sure that we've got materials that are going to be durable and will last. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty good any uh, maybe we should suggest uh if there's anyone else who would like to comment from the public well we don't want to close the public hearing yet i think there's still some discussion to be had um with our applicants i don't think there's any other comments from the public i think we're all part of the application team now and the ward counselor um <laughs> okay good to see you here today um so the traffic um, study was really exhaustive. It was great. You know, I really appreciate the way you've moved back that entrance onto Hatfield Street, moved back so that we, we're not queuing up towards Bridge Road. That's going to work out real well. Um, I think we still need to talk just a little bit about um, Bridge Road and the conflict with perhaps the bus stop and what the planning board feels we could do about moving forward with this, even with the uh, the inherent kind of conflict with pedestrians wanting to cross over to Hatfield Street that comes out on the heading south. Who installed that bus stop there? Was that the town? At the Valley Bike Station? There's a pad for Valley Bike, and now there's a pad for the bus stop? Oh, I thought you said, I thought you meant stop, like stop. I get what you're saying now. Bus stop, stop. not stop sign. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. what are you talking about? So um, that was a combination, that was an effort by um, 
PVTA had um, ex had funding for a bus stop, and we thought it would be appropriate in this location. So we worked with the applicant to find the location, paid for through funds that PVTA had, um, and then we also extend use that opportunity, the same installer, to install the pad for the um, bike share station. I you know I just I I worry. I really worry. I'm thinking about, you know, the AM peak hour and then having a bus stopping there and people trying to get around it going into oncoming traffic. It's just like it's just such a bad place for that to can we blow up that place again? You know, the the rendering is so small. Yeah. It's so tough to see the I'm sure it's been measured by the traffic engineers to show. Because I'm, I'm interested to see where that left-hand turn comes into to get um, cars are going to be driving into that left-hand, the new left-hand turn lane to get around the bus while it's stopped there. So there's no shoulder on the road. Yes, yeah, so I, I do want to say that this configuration has been talked through. It's contemplated one in the, um, the traffic um, report and then with EPW when it comes to this location. <clears throat> so. From an access standpoint, as it affects it by our property, um, we're stock controlled at this. It's a ride out only. So that's the only movement that's being impacted um, by a, a bus if it would be parked there. So everyone else would be stock controlled as well. So conflict points e exiting the site are as minimal as they can get. Um, so the, the, bu the bus is there from our impact. The situation now as it exists today is the exact same if, the, if, if all this happens. The, the, the bus it stops there, it operates, it functions uh, with or without these improvements. The idea here is for any, if the bus, if this, like for example, if this, this driveway wasn't here, the same issue would be occurring. The improvements that we were talking about, I don't think they would solve um, that rare, rare occasion when it happens. Um, we, we worked quite a bit with DPW on this. I just wanna add about the bus stop location. So this was a conversation that, that occurred between planning department, DPW, and our traffic engineer. We're all involved in the discussion and the determination of the location of the bus stop. So it was three, it was three different entities that made that determination. It's our full-size buses, not the short minivans, not short vans. Yeah, I wish we were part of that conversation. But, um, what what is this cross? Is there any way to blow this up a little bit? Can you expand that? I'll try to do this without breaking the computer. Is that the top at the top of the screen? Is this is the plus bar? There we go. Yeah, there, there it is. Go. Okay. Oops. I can't read the Is that too close? Just slide over. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. So where's the bus stop? Uh, the, bu the bus stop where it yeah. says limited yeah. proposed. Yep. Okay. So that's where the front of the bus is going to pull up to. It's a 12 foot wide drive aisle. So there might be four feet of drive aisle for a car to use. So it's gonna be five feet in the other lane. But also remember that in the real world where buses run all the time, cars stop behind the bus and wait for the bus to pick up riders and leave. It'll, it'll, mostly in the valley, does PVTA wanna pull over and have a free and clear lane? Most everywhere else in the world, buses stop in line and the cars wait and the bus goes on. So, so it's not a, I mean, that's a standard situation. So given that that's the case, this proposed striping area, can we just make it so that cars can't go around? No. And then, and then they yeah. So just correction, I'm saying, sorry, the, the striping areas prevent that from happening. Not yeah. Encourage it. So no, no, I get that. I'm saying, can we make, raise it up so that, raise, like, can I'm we raise it up so a car cannot go around i would defer to dpw on okay that. I mean, yeah. that's, that's yeah. something I, yeah are proposing physical yeah, obstructions and I, I don't know about that said so the bus doesn't come that often so it stops traffic for half yeah. a second is that is that a safer is that in the grand scheme of like the stopping traffic for for the time that it takes for people to to Come on, is that a better solution? I, 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 this happens in front of Smith College all day. I, I don't think it's an issue. No, no. They, when buses stop in front of Pulaski Park or Smith College, there's a, uh, a a wide open travel lane for them. I think 
well, sometimes there is, sometimes yeah. there is. Um, a lot more cross traffic over by in front of Smith yeah. all those yep. crescents or whatever streets are coming up. Where does the bus let passengers off coming the other way, coming up uh, west on Bridge Road? Where does that happen? This, there's a, an unmarked stop right now farther up. By Jasky's vegetable stand, by the house. <laughs> <where> <laughs> <laughs> if you pull up the PBTA customer's map, it shows you it shows you a stop. Wow. And then like, people will be no, there's no mark, there's no sign, there's there's nothing there. It's a it's a flag stop or something there's, I think they call it. Is it on the other side of Hatfield or is it back? It's back towards it's farther up Ridge Road. After Hat yes, on the other side of Hatfield. And so towards heading towards JFK. Okay, so it is past Hatfield. It's every 70 minutes. So those people would. Yeah, and it's just one bus across the road. Yeah. Yeah. And they just jaywalk across the road. Which is just our same situation, just a little bit farther to the left. Yeah. But this has gone been gone through by traffic engineers and the DPW and the planning office, and they all liked it. It's okay. Yeah, honestly, been decisions been made. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, because it ties into the same thing with the pedestrian yeah. movement. Yeah. There, you have all these conflicts at that corner. So, um, you know, I, uh, I don't. Does anybody want to hold up this project in order to get more information? about the pedestrian activity on Bridge Road or the bus stop. I mean, my feeling is, is that it, it's not going to change. It's like, I mean, it's not, um, you know, um, the unfortunate situation is it's not like that intersection is not good, at, but, we, but it's beyond the scope of this project to, to change it. Hopefully, hopefully once there's a vibrant you know, small micro community within our community, you know, then we can, and we somehow find a pot of gold, uh, we can improve it. But um, I, it just seems like there's just too many, too many things. And the project is a worthwhile project to support. Uh, so I guess I, I would, I would support saying yes, with the hope that, um, you know, the management company can work with the city to try to improve it. I, 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 I think I won't speak for anybody else, but, you know, we're in the position to improve these projects and it's a great project. And I think we want to approve it, but we also know if some tragedy happens there three years down the road, we're, we're going to know we, 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 People might look to us and say, you know, why didn't you guys think about this? So even though it's, I understand it's outside the scope of this project. I really do. Um, but what, what can we do? What, what can we do to, we all recognize it all. I agree. My kid would be going right across that street. I walked right across that street when I was his age and down that road. So like, so like, I feel this tension having children, like we know they're gonna do that. And we're approving a project that's gonna add a bunch of kids in that spot that just aren't there now. And pedestrians and bicyclists. So it feels like we have a little bit of a responsibility even though it's outside of the purview of this project. It's a moral dilemma. Yeah. Can we write a letter to DPW or something? Yeah, City Council? So, I mean, what do we do? So, Transportation Parking is a committee that um, evaluates um, traffic and pedestrian and bicycle safety issues. And so, there's also then a whole sidewalk inventory, and there are, and the evaluation of where there are sidewalks and where there are pressure points and where it's appropriate to sidewalk. So, there is, there are steps that are and um, evaluations and studies that have been done. And so, yes, there are ways that anybody, not that we would find the board, can um, provide feedback to the city on safety 
issues and can can we flag an update to the sidewalk study now that this project is coming online because maybe that wasn't considered as a pressure point when they did it it was like plant some cherry trees there so they're like want to put sidewalks there or something <laughs> um we could <laughs> we could ask the dpw to come in some evening and have this general conversation about sidewalks is that that's a how subcommittee of city council sorry george that you were the transportation yeah. King is a um not a subcommittee of city council it has two city councilors on the committee so it's a separate okay it's another uh, committee okay got it sorry george i didn't mean to yeah. no so if we're really concerned about sidewalks and how what the metrics are for pushing them up on the priority list, which is a concern in the city, we could ask them to come in and, and have that discussion because we often see this on our plans. Um, we're going to see it more and more often as we do infill, more and more infill in the city with very substandard sidewalks. So, you know, I think it's, it's also a funding issue, obviously. So yep. that's where city councilors are important to be involved. Yeah, in I, was, yeah I mean, I think Jackson and Bridge Street schools have, I think, sort of special conditions because the other two elementary schools are in areas where they're just not walkable in the same way that some of the more central the central schools are. And you could very viably live in this apartment building with no car, but you are living in quite a dangerous situation. Again, through no fault of this project. Um, so yeah, I think we should find a way to flag this. I mean, what, do you have a sense of when your construction start is? So this is basically one of our first steps in our process. So um, once we have our permits, we would be applying to state funding. This, uh, which would our application would go in in January, um, if we are awarded funding through the state, um, we would be awarded in about August of next year. Um, we wouldn't be closing financially until March 2024, and that's when we would start construction. So it's it's a little bit of a way out. I mean, this is kind of early on for us. This is when it comes to affordable housing development. This is early on in the process for us. <laughs> it's it's slow and steady is is, is our pace. So um, yeah, and I I think I just want to make just one comment in part of this conversation that may have gotten lost, and I understand that the use is changing. But this was an active property with 163 beds in it 12 years ago. So there was activity happening here. It's a different type. I mean, it's not children, you know, and I understand your, your perspective, but I think it's important to remember that this was an active site for a long time. And over the 12 years or 11 years since it's been vacant, you know, that activity has dropped a lot. So, you know, just wanted to put that in terms of perspective of remembering that it was an active site and there was active activity around there. Um, and I think we're making some great improvements in terms of the circulation, mm -hmm. adding a sidewalk, things that were not there when it was an active site um, 12 years ago. So just want to make that. Point. I think that's that's well understood. I think we're all excited and hopefully these residents will bike and walk around the neighborhood more than the previous residents. So. <laughs> Which is our major concern. Yeah, it, again, for high school students going to Smith Volk or to Northampton High School, there's really tricky, tricky byways to also Hatfield Street. I don't think has a sidewalk at all heading back towards Locust Street and Smith Vocational. <clears throat> um, but down Prospect, you can get hook up to the bike path or, or continue on to Elm Street or um, cross over at get to the bike path. Yeah. yeah. But there's just and and again, you know, Bridge Road is becoming in the past 11, 12 years, the, the traffic on Bridge Road, I think, has really grown. Um, you know, I know that the traffic report showed it pretty well how it's going to be lessened from um, years past. But Bridge Road now has just become a major route. And when we see the uh, <clears throat> the redevelopment of Main Street in a couple of years, Bridge Road is going to see even more traffic. Um, so yeah, well, Bridge Road isn't seeing anywhere near the traffic it'll see once the Damon Road construction is done because yes. there's a lot of people who just avoid Damon Road right now, myself included. Demon Road, right? So Demon once, Road. once yep. Damon Road's complete, yep. then Bridge Road will pick up again, right? I'd say it's probably at I don't know sixty percent of what it would be otherwise. Yep. Right in the mornings, the traffic backs up to here, right from the light, basically. 
Well, it used to. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully they're resolving that down at the intersection of Damon Road and King Street a little bit with that resignalization, but we'll see. Yeah. Oh, I move. I move to close public comment. Oh, I still want to talk oh, about site sorry. lighting. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Never mind. I withdraw that. <laughs> Actively withdraw. That. Oh, I just I just noticed on the photometric plan there's quite a few zeros in the in the parking areas. Um, I know that you're staying under the maximum. Uh, you had 0.36 foot candles for the average. Our standard is looking for a one foot candle average. So I'd say we're, we're way below the average value with zeros in the parking field. So I'm thinking that we might need more um, even lighting because there's going to be some some dark spots. So just uh, for clarification, it's the maximum average is one foot candles. The intent for this site is the way the ordinance reads. I don't know what the maximum average is. So like so when you when you have when you, when you have the average right, if it was a one point one, we'd be in violation. The idea is to drop down the ball the, the actual lighting um, averages. So what we've done is we've actually had a pretty well distributed. Um, design where we're putting all the light downward over the cars in particular in the landscaping areas um, with 16 foot lights um, most of the, the light we'll call the generation from that it's actually pretty contracted to just around the actual poles um, lighting's a, a unique uh, characteristic where the higher the poles are actually the better spread and the lower the intensity is at grade but it's the higher spread so with the with these the concentration we have we actually think this is actually an appropriate design for residential use it's not too intense. It's within industry standards. Um, in parking lots, you want to see between it's really 0.5 and 0 and 0.5 and 2. You don't want to have high intensities in residential areas. And the, obviously, the intention is not to have glare over the property line. So that's yep. that's great. There's no glare over the property line. 100% agree with you. Um, I'm, I'm just looking at you know all of these zeros, even like right across the front door yeah I'll, there's just zeros throughout the parking field and we're we talking really pr on prospect ave yeah so well, we we actually ave, yeah we we evaluated looking at shelter so we looked at there's this so, so on the northeast corner there is actually a pole right by the bike shelter that we've implemented um there is lighting around the building there is lighting a light pole by the southerly um shed as well if you're looking at the areas along Prospect Ave, we evaluated that with the team to install some uh, LED lights in that location at 16 foot heights. Uh, the issue is that what happens is the light from the back, even when they're house side shielded, uh, they still spill off above what's allowed from the zoning code. Um, so the intent, we, we looked at that. We couldn't get that to work um, in those locations without basically violating the zoning code. This, this analysis doesn't take into account street lights that exist on Prospect Ave though, right? That is correct. Okay, so I think there is more light. There's street lights on Prospect, and same with Bridge Road. I, mean, I assume I don't know if there's street lights there. The lighting you're seeing here is generation only from what we have control of. So I'm I'm not looking at these plans right now, um, but the 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 driveway coming in and off of Hatfield. Again, it would it would depend whether there's a street light on Hatfield near there. I think is probably bigger. Yeah, going to make more of an impact than the site lighting that they're providing. Right. So the zone, the zoning code basically prevents lighting from being generated off. No, the no, we understand. Yeah, we understand that. Um, but that's mostly so it doesn't shine into residential homes and yards. It's not kind of shining into that street or a driveway. Uh, yeah. I, I think just, the most important thing for me with site lighting is to have a uniform site lighting, whether that uniformity is at one foot candle or twenty foot candles. You could have, if you have 20 foot candles and 10 foot candles in a lot, the 10 foot candles is going to look dim, right? Or if you have one foot candle and zero foot candles, the zero foot candles is going to look dim. So it's that you, you want to have a uniform distribution of light. And I just see there's like a lot of. Right. Red and and that, again, in the, in the design, when we look through this, that's actually one of the parameters that's set forth within the code, right? There, there's actually a maximum permitted foot candle we're allowed yep. to have, which is three. Um, 
Yeah, I work. I work in a lot of cities throughout the country. That is a very low standard. Yeah. Um, so from the lighting standpoint, it's, it's it's very limited. So getting even distribution, we actually think we've done a real good job. So no more living more than three uh, uh, foot candles, um, and just for the boards, that's the amount of light generated by one candle one foot away. So it's it's not a lot of light. Um, I understand that. Yeah. So it, this is actually thing is is going to be pretty uniform. So you're having averages between we'll call it 0. 0.5 and three. So that, that uniformity ratio is actually pretty. Um, Call it within parameters. It's it's really tough to tell from the human eye the difference between one and one foot candle. Right, but it is easy to tell the difference between one foot candle and zero. Foot I just candles. don't think there's zeros because there's the street lights that aren't there's, even. <laughs> there's zeros like all through here. Oh, that no back in the back. Sorry, I was looking at the other. This is the front door to the building, and there's zeros like, you know, on the crosswalk from the ADA slash EV space to the front door. So, you know, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I think our lighting standards are kind of messed up. <laughs> Carolyn, do we have any standard for doing these lighting analyses with street lights, with the public street lights, or it's, it's just sight lights? It's just sight lights. Okay. And we don't have anyone in the city who really <clears throat> is a lighting engineer. Karen reviews these that are in her office and all the things, and we have standards, but. You know, it's not like we have the tree warden who looks at these things. We don't have the the electric, the, the lighting expert. Right, but our, our zoning bylaw says the average should be one, not the not the maximum average. I don't know what a maximum average is. We should be we should be trained to be as close to one at, for the average as possible. Yeah, yeah. There are dark spots. That's what he's saying. <laughs> I mean, that's it's literally. I mean, a point one or a point two might seem like a dark spot in this lot, but a zero is definitely a dark spot. In particular, really, it's just the prospect out parking spaces we're talking about, right? Closest to the residence? No, I'm talking about on the south side of the building. Let's see if I can pull this up. In front of the proposed southern bike shelter. It's possible for you to pull up the. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying. Yeah, let's see if I can do this right now. We can actually have a slide. I'm talking about, yeah. In the crosswalk of the Asian. Try to direct me. I'm going to try to scroll right uh, to it. Go down. Oop. Yeah, just go down the bottom. Oh, that might be too close. Yeah. yeah. There you go. I'm just plugging my computer to have the touch screen. Yeah, it's kind of tough to tell. We may have to pull up the actual plans. But if the area I think you're talking about, Right south of that. Right. Right there. Can you read those, George? No. <laughs> I, can read, I, I can read I can read off. So I, I think the areas that we're talking about, which should actually be where my cursor is currently, those are the areas of zero that we're talking about. Yep. There's actually a zero right in the crosswalk, right by that catch basin. Yeah, yeah. So it's it, in that main drive aisle, there would be zeros on either side of it, though. They start to pick uh, pick back up um, directly in front of the actual shelter. It's 0.4. So it goes 0 0.4, 0 0.10. Uh, so it actually drops off pretty hard in comparison to the rest of the site. And then it picks back up again as you uh, travel up um, the Hatfield Street way. Uh, we, we can propose another uh, singular light um, in that location. Um, you know, ultimately, there's not going to be a large change in the, the overall light generation if that's the area in particular we're talking about. But I, I can tell you, we. Uh, no, it would be centrally located. Um, let's see if I can find my cursor right here. If you guys see it, that would probably be the best location for an additional light pole. If that's the area of, of actual concern, um, I'm concerned about every zero that's within your paved area. Personally, people are concerned about the crosswalk. I mean, the cars are coming down; they have headlights. So, does that really matter if they're more if, if the driveway is fully lit versus? I, I agree that we should um, definitely have some light in the crosswalk. Yeah. So. You know, that's why I was wondering if a light under the roof of the bike shelter might um, cast light down towards the crosswalk, which might cover that. The, yeah, I would assume that you'd want the bike shelter lit for safety for many different reasons. I mean, that's like a place that you could have people hiding out and yep. tinkering with bikes, tinkering with bikes, which aren't theirs. Yeah. Yep. 
so much nefarious activity happening. <laughs> a lot of management going on in this, in this case. <laughs> well, certainly, yeah, I think to pick up on just that, if there's a way to address that dark area at the crosswalk, it seems pretty crucial. Um, when we're talking the EV um, spaces going back to the building. I think the applicant can do something to it. Okay. Yeah. Great. Great. Well, thanks, Chris, for looking at the lighting plan um, in detail for us. This this is the drawback from not having uh, plan sheets that are blown up to a way that the planning board can look at it. We're all kind of looking at our computers and at your computer. Yeah, I can't get. <laughs> It's just a prop. <laughs> Come on. I'm so excited about it. It's the plastic thing from Ikea. Is They're the same problem, right? Are those real? prescription glasses or are those just <laughs> it's real? Those just glass. <laughs> You're the same problem. <laughs> um, so are there other conditions that we would want to um, agree on before we close the public hearing? that we're going to add to our recommendation. We have a, our, our, we're clear on our sidewalk on Prospect Street that it's going to be concrete. It's going to extend all the way to the property line on Prospect. And there's going to be, a, the applicant is going to install a crosswalk with two curb cuts there. Um, so that was in the, that doesn't need to be a comment, right? Because it was already on the plans. It yeah. uh, doesn't need to be a condition. So you you should put a condition that the because none of the events that you want that crosswalk uh, um, to be added, uh, and the and the ADA ramp. Sorry, at Allison. Good. And light. I would. I guess. And the lights. That there's uh, all the crosswalks at least have. Uh, have no dark spots yeah the one that the one at the north side of the building seems fine so it'd just be that that southern one yeah i mean the crosswalk of, or lack thereof or whatever we're going you know, to tell them across the exit onto ridge road it looks like currently there's a street light kind of where that is going to be and i don't know that'll have to be coordinated in the field i guess if they're going to move the street light or whatever but I don't know how you do that. If you have a maximum average that we're trying to hit, but then there's actually street lights that aren't in this, you're going to get higher than the maximum average if you actually take light readings, right? Do we ever take right light? Yeah. But, you're, but, you're, but what I'm hearing is just the back um, crosswalk is the area. Well, that, you know, that's what Chris was trying. Yeah. I was just pointing out that they will have to coordinate with the existing street light that's right where their exit is. Um, the applicant, we're not requesting any kind of mitigation, mitigation fund from the applicant for trees or traffic at this point. Uh, they're showing replacement that yep. exceeds the requirements of under the formula on their tree. Okay. And then in terms of traffic mitigation, they're showing a reduction in, in trip, uh, peak hour trip generation from the previous years. So. Um, we're just back to that sidewalk again. We're recommending that the sidewalk be installed on the opposite side of the telephone poles that exist on the Prospect Road rather than curving. Right. Yeah, and let's, if we think we've finished all our questions for the applicant, I guess. Um, there's sure. Um, so you're saying you're saying curb, sidewalk, pole. No curb, street curb, a uh, grass pole, sidewalk, okay. parking lot. We may not be able to provide the type of vegetation and screening that we show in our plans with that adjustment. So. So then you would have to do this windy thing around the, the telephone poles. Is that? Or alternatively, we could potentially adjust the plan so that we're shifting the 17 spaces that are, um, let me see if I can pull up the site plan and let's do it here. Don't you still have a five foot strip between the um, any sidewalk and the curb for the parking area? 
in which you could still plant those shrubs that you're proposing? Right now, the plants have a 10 foot wide planting bed, which mm -hmm. allows for the that greater density of planting. Um, if we move the four foot wide lock in, in some places we're down to four feet wide, which will, will be kind of. Um, I think a usable sidewalk is much higher priority. I mean, honestly, the shrubs grow into the sidewalk anyway, and it's they just get annoying. <laughs> I mean, if people are using the sidewalk, they'd be... So we are responding to neighbor concerns on that. There were concerns about making sure that the existing arborvitae that were there that already provide a screening to the property, um, that we're replacing that. So that was a neighborhood concern that we are responding to. But those are shrubs planted there. You're not replanting arborvitae. Correct. Correct. Right. You're going to have, you're going to, the, at the lowest spot, the slimmest spot, you'll still have 48 inches, four feet. Yeah. For planting. Yeah. But it's, I, it, there's limited uh, plant material, I think, that could survive in such a small planting area that would provide screening. We can leave arborvitae. <laughs> yeah. Unless we're putting back arborvitae, which is. Yeah. Just don't do all there, but. Because of the poles. Because of the telephone poles. The sidewalk would have to they'd be in the middle of the sidewalk going or, west. You're saying go make, push it west. Yeah. Because they hit their edge of parking. There's just so much parking up here. We're working with an existing parking lot. Yeah. yeah. What did you have in mind for screen at that four foot area? What did you have in mind for screening for the neighbors on Prospect? Well, the 10 foot. That's so wide. So what are the 10 foot rhododendrons? Um, not more spurs and flowers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Yeah.
the uh, Sam, you were comfortable with the egress and access and uh, security and yeah. I mean, that's it's, yep. it's not. That's, I I just I look at this thing and I and I see the same all the different places that that Salo House had, and I know that when my mother in law lived there, it, drugs right, were a yeah. sizable problem. Well, that yep, not, and um, and they're they're managing it and. Good. That's it. Okay. All right. Um, well, I think we're all set then. Did you, what, what was the outcome of the EV charger? Do you want to discuss it after you close oh, the hearing? No. So that should be one of the conditions too. We proposed to the uh, applicant that they have two additional total of six, total of six, two currently, and then four with stubs for future. I don't understand. I know this is like an existing paved area, but this is hardly like an existing parking lot. I mean, why are we not just using like the new parking lot standards? But it is an existing parking lot. Kind of. I mean, this is like. Because it says building new 25 new parking spaces. So they're not building. You only new count parking. the new spots that you're creating. Yeah. I see. Yeah. And the six gets us to that. Yeah. Uh, one per 15. Yeah. Any spaces. So that's six. Anyway. But we're so, not we're not telling them to do six. We're telling them to do five. That's what you're just talking about. We're just saying to do six. Six. Oh, I thought it was two, we're doing two now. Two now. Four later. With the ability to do four. Stub outs. Just yeah. It's just PVC. PVC, right? Yeah. I, and then we are asking them to make to make it so that the um, driveway or that the um the handicap space is not a it's not one of those keep it striped as is but just don't designate it yeah an ada space for now and then if they do it later they do it okay good um one last comment we we really appreciate that uh the landscaping is really nice now it became quite an eyesore for a while um um, one of the windows, I don't know who manages the property now. You know, people are getting in the building now. Okay, and you'll tend to that. Okay, good. Good. All right. We, um, so is there a motion to close the public hearing? Move to close the public. Uh, move to close the public comment. Okay. Seconded. Seconded. Any discussion? Question. Did we uh, determine what about the internal sidewalks if we wanted striping not not striping or something else i think the the one that we discussed was across the main entrance on bridge road yeah. um that the dpw didn't want to see stripe in there so but thanks for bringing that up again i recommended that they do some other kind of pavement marking that we've seen at as carolyn said a commercial spot um but i think what i'm hearing is that there's a not not enough traffic coming and going to rationalize that. Um, although, I don't know how many, you know, we can't foretell how kids are gonna be walking up to JFK um, for sure. A lot of kids, kids are gonna be walking down to, um, down that way to Goodwill and Damon Road. So across that parking lot, there may not be a, a lot of pedestrian traffic, so. Okay. We're okay with that, keeping it unmarked, unstriped, as DPW recommended. Yep. And it's not only kids, I know. <clears throat> okay, so the motion's been made to close the public hearing. Uh, Second, any, seconded. seconded. Discussion? All right, all those in favor? Anyone opposed? Unanimous, okay. Um, so we've hashed this out a little bit. I think any a motion to be made with our comments that conditions that Carolyn has. Do we have to memorize the conditions, or we can just say you can say, and the, I think there are four conditions: EV the the sidewalk maybe there's only two conditions ev the sidewalk the lights on the crosswalk that's three 
um, crosswalk at Allison. And, and the additional crosswalk at Allison. So you might just want to sort of a general condition about the um, plan sheets being final plan sheets with all the detailed comments from um, DPW to be submitted 15 days before building permit requests. Okay. Did the applicant hear all those five? So there are five conditions. So I'll uh, move to approve the site plan review, uh, more than one curb cut, 40 R review by Prospect Place Owner LLC um, at 737 Bridge Road, Northampton, with the five um, conditions that we just listed. Second. Great. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? All right, hearing none, we'll go to a vote. All those in favor? No opposition. So it's unanimous. Um, thanks for all your hard work. We know it's just the beginning, as you stated. Uh, we really look forward to it. Just a second. Um, it's going to be a great asset for the community. Chris. Okay. On my laptop. <laughs> I didn't mean to. I you had me fooled. I thought you were up there computing a storm you know, this whole time. Really good looking. <laughs> That's yeah. why I'm looking on here now. Something about certificates out here. I didn't mean to. Okay. So I have to see if we actually have um, ANRs. I don't think we do, but um, I just have the two other items, the close out of the subdivision and minutes. Yeah. Before we go to that, do we have any kind of next step in terms of sidewalks, in terms of that specific place or kind of wide? I'd like to flag it for somebody. Yeah. So one way to it with the transportation and parking. Um, I mean, you know, one thing that you, um, I wouldn't recommend doing it tonight because it's already getting late, but maybe it's your next meeting. Um, you know, you could vote on a, a memo or something to send to DPC yeah. that raises your concerns about these new developments. And um, before putting that together, you could pretend, you know, I could bring the, I could send out the sidewalk inventory so you guys can evaluate that, what it looks like and sort of what the process is. And then if you Great. want to think about putting together a memo, then we could do that at your next meeting. I don't think you have, um, I actually don't think there's no meeting for November. <laughs> um, so it would be December. No wow. meeting for November? Because of Thanksgiving? Yeah, because we didn't get any permit applications. We had another one on our radar, which was the second curb cut for ADA accessibility. We were talking about a, a zoning change. Zoning. Oh, right, right, right. That's a zoning uh, amendment, right. So mm -hmm. I think we'd also want to draft something up regarding that. Um. Yeah, I mean, I can bring you a draft for that. Um, Who's the chair of the TPC? Um, Donna, the director of DPW. Donna Laskelly. Is it Does it make sense? I mean, because I feel like we've had this transportation thing a couple times since I've been on the board. And it, I mean, we are called the planning. I mean, why, why isn't that just folded into what we're doing? I mean, I... Which part? The sidewalks, you mean? The transportation or the, um, the that committee? That committee. Uh, you mean, why don't we, why are we part of that committee? Well, yeah, I mean, why, why, why have another? Uh, because they focus on a lot of nuts and bolts, yeah. um, pedestrian safety issues. So there is, um, 
um, there is a planning board seat at that table. Um, I'm trying to think of. No. Oh, that no. came off. It's it's just yeah, planning uh, planning office. And, there, and then there's the yeah. um, right. There's a subcommittee called the pedestrian and bicycle. bicycle. Yep. But, uh, so um, they really are charged with all yeah, things yeah. that are yeah I, I was just you know it's brought up a couple of times and especially when we're dealing with like more complicated infill things about you know trans about you know like you know like for example that the the property that they were talking about they the eight units that uh whatever uh yeah, William 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 yeah. you know and and it was like we've had these this discussions of, you know, I just wonder maybe when we're dealing with us, maybe now that we're talking about infill, maybe when we're actually dealing with larger developments, maybe they, they need to come join us for that for a, a short a short time because that's it's something that the public always has a question yeah. about. Yeah, I mean, I think there there really is there's sort of there's the planning piece and then there's the jurisdiction piece about the infrastructure. This is public infrastructure. It's under DPW's jurisdiction. But yes, there's a bigger conversation about where are we as a city investing um, funds and 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 there, for the limited resources, there has to be you know prioritization. So we've done multiple studies about prioritizing different areas, but we haven't really talked about. Um, as a city sort of looking at how we might support new housing development in X, Y, and Z neighborhoods or evaluating it, I think, from that lens. So um, it's definitely, I'm not sure that it makes sense to have a joint conversation for, for permitting purposes, because it really is sort of um, a separate function is sort of ensuring that our infrastructure network is okay. being maintained being improved um so in terms of strategic planning though the, the dpw focuses on cars and automobiles they don't focus really on pedestrians and bicycle activities right but we have well that's, that's changed i mean that's changed a lot um, resources go on whether it comes from the city or the state so a few months ago when we talked about making this a smart growth zone i think if we thought about the smart growth 40r i think it's called right in the more traditional way that you would say i'm making a zone of smart growth and i'm getting money from the state presumably that money could feed back into the smart growth zone being the priority area yeah. but we've chosen to do this in kind of like oh we're going to take a project and make it a smart growth so we can get the money i think like the way the smart growth legislation was written was with that in mind, like let's use the money from the smart growth state money to create the infrastructure and create actual smart growth zones, not like pick and choose little developments. I think I think like a more traditional reading of how the law was written would kind of help us here. Um, I, I honestly don't know how we make DPW do anything, but uh, I mean, isn't there also like a, a committee on the city council that prioritizes projects or it's like a joint committee that that prioritizes projects? Or does not, that not include DPW work? Uh, I, I'm not sure what you're, are you talking about I'm capital? I'm capital. Okay, that's not, so that's not prioritizing stuff. projects necessarily. I mean, it's prioritizing, prioritizing capital projects, but mm -hmm. those not are the- DPW work. Not per se, I mean, it's the overall sort of okay. all the projects, but you know, I think there's, this is where the tension is in, in um, the community is, um, we don't have enough resources to address all the issues that um, have been building over time. And so that's where it's important to, you know, continue the conversation with city councilors, with other committees, with transportation and parking and um, sort of figure and, and be involved in that discussion about what the priorities are for the city, the community. Um, and, but I think it makes sense for you as a planning board to sort of think about, all right, based on some of these things that you've seen and some of the concerns raised, you know, put together your comments about that and send it formally along and um, for it to be brought into that conversation. Yep, that's all we can do. 
and or and you can talk to your city councilors. Um, the two mm -hmm. city councilors on the transportation and parking, you know, I think are Alex of Ward Five and Jim Nash of Ward Three. I mm -hmm. think. But and there, those two are trying to do some innovative things around traffic calming and things, but um, it's difficult. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's you know. going to be a difficult sidewalk on Hatfield to build. It's there's, yeah, it's not going to be easy. But your other observation about this project in particular, Chris, around the uh, the, the the amount of runoff water, the amount of water that's going into the existing system, you know, aren't there other ways to get an applicant to have some of that retained, or at least and so they're reaching some of that by cleansing the water, I guess, that's going into the system, but. Um, we, we would think that's in the DPW's really best interest is to keep as much water as they can out of the storm water system and the sewer system. Um, but they didn't make any kind of effort to do that here. The DPW doesn't really advocate for that. Well, it depends on the, well, no, I, I wouldn't say that. I think it really depends on the site. You know, can the soils handle it? And also the conditions are, this is an existing condition. They're making um, significant improvements in terms of landscaping and reducing pavement in some areas and sw switching over, you know, they're getting rid of that whole turnaround in the front and that's becoming green space. Yeah. So that's the standard. Reduction was like maybe a hundred square feet out of, you know, but the eight, value, right. So it was the, like, it's like the reducing there's razor thin. There's essentially just no change. And, but that's, the standard by which they're reviewing the application. So, and yes, there is a, they push, DPW does push for um, um, on site um, infiltration to the extent that, you know, it's feasible uh, on a site. So, that's that part is always part of the equation um, in, in evaluating the, the applications. I didn't say anything, George, because they had a stormwater permit. So, it's like, Right. Move. But, but we want to be the DPW's allies in, in some of that, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just that site was developed so long ago. It's like, there's, you know, there's nothing that you would recognize. It's like the stormwater management systems that we ask for today. And understanding it's a redevelopment site, but it was not a great site to start with, you know? So stormwater wise, it's not very good. They had some comments in the stormwater report about at least adding deep sump catch basins for water quality. The system that the applicant proposed only removed like 50% of total suspended solids and you're, you're looking for 80%. So there, it was addressed in there. So there'll be a little bit yep. of a water quality improvement, but not a reduction in runoff rates. It's really just going to be what it already is. It's going to be flat. So. Okay, so let's try to follow up on that um, uh, memo around sidewalks. And uh, boy, I, you know, about two years ago, we had a conversation with David Valletta from the DPW mm -hmm. around some basic things like the capacity of their their systems here in the city, water, um, sewage, things like that, you know, be, in relation to all the infill that's happening now too in the city core. Um, so maybe there's a place too where we can have another conversation with however they generate this the sidewalk um, priority list um, and push for what we think are some critical ones. But I think when it comes to that transportation and parking, people do come to them and say, this is a critical problem in my neighborhood. And can you address this with speed bumps or whatever? Perhaps as Carolyn saying, we could use that avenue also to talk specifically around Hatfield Street and that intersection and get some tracks in there because it does come down to money. That's a huge project. Yeah, I mean, and capacity. I don't know that Hatfield is is a priority for the city. It's just the thing that happened to come before us, yeah. and it's like very clearly an issue. Yeah, doesn't mean it's like there might be a hundred worse things, right. and DPW probably knows better than I'm sure they know better than I do. And I like the idea of you forwarding us that list of sidewalks yeah. that they have. That would be great. But yeah, to Mulson's point, I mean, we know what. The residents there are going to do if i'm trying to get to like that shopping plaza that's like the direct route you're yep. not going to walk east to the light and then go around you know that's a very circuitous way to get there yep. 
but it was like the decision on that on the Catholic Church. You know, we didn't want to see it reduce. It's not a great thing, but we didn't want to see that reduced to a pile of rubble. We don't want to lose this project of affordable housing because of a possibility of of uh, some kind of danger there. So often it's that Solomon-like decision. We were thinking that. Don't kill the baby. George, you want to cut the building in half? Okay. On on Holly Street. <laughs> the, the years ago. Years ago. Oh, oh, that years ago. Oh. Well, and just the other day, the CPA money, you know, that went to them. So, but let's not open up that can of worms here. We have A and R's to do, right? And uh, request for a closeout for the okay. Higgins Way. Can I just ask one clarifying general question? When you're looking back at uh, the previous use of a site, so comparing, you know, that this is a, a, a reduction in traffic impact and so forth, how long is that look back before, you know, let's say that this auto house had closed 25 years ago, would it still, and it had been sitting vacant since then, would it still compare or is there sort of an expiration date where we'd be looking brand new? Well, um, I think there's no real expiration date. The idea is it's not a, it's not a green site. Right. that never had a use on it. So there was some traffic being generated at the site. And so the way the tr traffic mitigation is, um, it's meant to address those new uses that create those incremental increases in trips. And so, yes, it's been years, but there we don't want to treat it as though nothing ever was there. Okay, thank you. Can I interject for a minute, sir? What brings you to the planning board today? I'm waiting for the Higgins Way. Oh, okay. <laughs> you have been. Fascinating. Thank you. Well, at this time, why don't we, we turn our, our attention the <laughs> to the closeout of the Higgins Way subdivision? So this is not a public hearing. Um, what happens when a subdivision goes through the process of um, uh, submittal, approval, construction, closeout is that, you know, through each of those phases, there's, um, you know, when, it's, when you all approve subdivision, which is the creation of a street for the purposes of creating frontage, um, you um, typically um, approve the planning board is the board um, charged with approving those plans. And because there's a heavy infrastructure component, there's a performance guarantee put in place. And you've seen these come before you for reduction in performance guarantee to the point at which there's a little bit left in the subdivision and you don't release that until the applicant's ready to come back and say, okay, I'm done sign you know sign off there i'm done and please release me from my obligations i'm this is all set and good ready to go this subdivision happened to be one at um uh state hospital higgins way that where the developer um walked and didn't complete the project you may remember that we came back the people who were on the board at the time two years ago to um uh ask the board to have us um exercise the performance guarantee basically um take the money from the that was set aside for the purposes of finishing the subdivision so that the city could facilitate the completion of the subdivision on behalf of the homeowners that were already there even though there were some lots that hadn't been completed so um with that plus an um so the city took did that oversaw the um you know hired the engineer to come back and um identify what had to be completed the city then um put out to bid the contract to complete those items and so now coming before you we basically ran down the account to six thousand eight hundred dollars um and so we're here to um, I'm here to ask you to officially close out the planning board permit of that so that it um, closes the chapter for the homeowners association. They can move on and, and um, they also need a close out for the conservation commission and also their stormwater permit. Um, so there are some elements that weren't um, that are still actually in um, 
on the homeowners here, who's here today might want, um, want to speak to that. But as part of this, one of the things that we that um, was done last summer now, I think, um, was to plant trees along the on the street in the tree belt. Some of those trees failed, so the the landscaper was going to come back and replant because it was under warranty. But there are things that there are a couple of things that didn't weren't built exactly as designed. But the engineer has essentially signed off to say, you know, the system this is a stormwater system is functioning. It's not exactly the way it was designed to function. There were things that were built that were a little bit different than what was approved. There were the roof, the footprints of the homes are bigger. The driveways are bigger. Um, so there are things that um, changed, but at any rate, we feel like we've brought it as uh, far as we can. So um, I it, normally it's the developer that comes before you and asks for release, but um, because of what happened, I'm presenting it to you um, because we Where's, closed out this. Funds go. Where's the sixty eight hundred? Um, we told the owners association that we would give it to them. Um, and then they can do, you know, use it to, there's some, still some um, drainage uh, runoff issues that popped up during um, the course of this. So um, they have a, uh, they could use it to do that. They could do, use it for whatever other subdivision improvements they want to make, but it would go to the HOA, not an individual. Way. No, it's a private way. It was designed and permitted under the private way standards. Sir, would you like to comment on the situation at all? I think you have to you have to be in the mic here. Sorry. Even though it's not a public hearing, it's kind of people are still out there on Zoom. We have quite an audience out there. Yes, we do. One is our one fan, is president of our HOA, who's Tom. Uh, my name is Eric <laughs> Boven. I'm a member of the board of the HO Higgins Way HOA. It's been a long and strange trip, but. I want to really extend our thanks to Carolyn and to Wayne before her for helping us out of a very, very difficult situation. And it's it's a nice project. It ended up being a, a wonderful community and the adversity brought the neighbors together. <laughs> a few loose ends, but um, we got a good organization in place to take care of them. And again, I really thank the planning office for all the help that they gave us over the past three years. That's it. Thank you. I move that you uh, release the funds. I move the release the funds. Are we? Are, do we need any like evidence, or we just we just assume it's all good? I mean, um, it's fine. I mean, I, don't I think I sent you the links to the yeah. um, engineer's report. Uh -huh. um, so no, you should not rely on me. <laughs> But I'm relying on the engineer we hired to, um, and he was very clear, um, you know, there are things that they were beyond the scope of the work that we hired them to do that they noticed were not exactly the way right. um, they were built, but, you know, it's functioning. Okay. And so. yeah, it, it's somewhat unusual in my tenure on the board to do this much work. Another one was up in Leeds, I think the Beaver Brook development for a while that right. held on to money in escrow. So we've been pretty fortunate with developers by yeah. and large, mm -hmm. um, but- I'll, uh, I'll second then. Yep, so the motion's been made and seconded to close out this permit for the project on Higgins Way. Any discussion? I have a question. I'm not proposing that we do this, but what, what would, uh, that we deny it, but what, what's the alternative? If we said no, we're not willing to close it out, then what happens? I'm just procedurally, I'm trying to understand what are. Yeah. Well, you would only do that if you felt like there was more that could or should be done okay. to. Um, and so if that were the case, you'd want to identify, no, I'm not, I'm not comfortable doing this until X, Y, or Z. Um, and because ultimately, you know, you, you're, you, the board is, um, accepting the fact that the subdivision has been um, completed as uh, as this has been approved or substantially in compliance with what was approved. You can't use the 6800 for a fact-finding mission to Hawaii or anything? <laughs> mm -hmm. And I and I guess because the HOA is here to support that they're ready to have it closed out too, you know, rather than... Is there like a waiver of... Of litigation, or I mean, I mean, is there like this is all everyone's agreeing that like everyone's happy and this is the end of it? I mean, I, I, and then the title can move on and everything. 
Um, yes. I mean, there's not, I don't know exactly what you're referring to, to litigation. I mean, there's, you know, I, I have no idea what's going on with the developer. Um, and so we, we're not involved in that, you know, um, so I wouldn't want to respond to yes or no. As There's to, nothing from the homeowners actively saying, like, we agree that this is all good or anything like that. Well, they've been asking to have it closed out yeah. because okay. they want they, okay. want they want to close the loop. They want to finalize this. Keep and moving on. OK, fine. Yeah. All right. Motion's been made and seconded. There was some discussion. Um, all those in favor closing out this permit. Great. Unanimous. Okay. Thanks for bearing with us. You're welcome to stay for our approval of minutes and A and R. But <laughs> okay, um, Eric, I just want I didn't I haven't processed their um, distribution of funds yet because I was waiting for this to happen. So I'll do that in the next few days. <laughs> no, it's just in the minutes. Yeah, you can get it framed. <laughs> Put it up in your shed. <laughs> All right. Okay. We have three sets of minutes from September 8th, September 22nd, and October 13th. That I, I sent you an updated September 22nd because Chris realized. Right. Good <laughs> man. I I often look just to see who's attended and who didn't and make sure that I was there or not. Yep. I move to approve the minutes of the dates that you just said. Okay. Second. Minutes are made and seconded to approve those three sets of minutes. Um, any discussion? Thanks, Chris, for looking at those religiously. All those in favor? It's unanimous. We're on a unanimous roll tonight. And now we have a couple of our infamous, our famous A&Rs. Uh, actually, I, um, I don't... Um... There was one a &R that came in, but it was after I posted the agenda. So I don't um, think that technically we should review. Oh, although I will say you're not going to meet again until December. So there is a 21 day period that you have to review it. So I'm just going to put it up on the screen. Yes. Um, otherwise so we just blood. become approved without us. Yes. Or endorsed. We wouldn't want that, right? No, no, not at all. Never. Um, like okay. Assess appointment of the like justices or something. So here we go. It's just a land swap. It's not even creating a new lot. So let's just see this. Love those friendly neighborly land swaps. So um, can you see this? I'm going to zoom in. Okay. Um, so this is on Monroe and it's just the back part of a lot, um, these two lots. And it was just this, this um, area here, existing lot line. Um, Monroe is off of Elm Street by the Catholic, where's Monroe? Off of South. Off of South Street. Yeah. So, um, so it's really to give that little wedge in the back to 38B106 from 105. And four, well, sorry, but is four feet for the setback from the garage okay? Yes, detached um, accessory structures can be four feet from the lot line. Now that it matters, good question. It's not what we're endorsing. Right. Here. Well, we wouldn't want to create a no, we, would have to we don't have a choice. If it was non-conforming, they'd have to get a variance to do this. But right, yeah. I moved to approve the A and R. Second, said, said location. Second. Of oh, Monroe Street. Okay. Motion's been made and seconded to approve the A and R. Any discussion? All in favor? Oi. You know. Okay. That's all I have. Second. All right. Motion's been made. Close the meeting at. 10, 10 9, 9.47. All those in favor? All right. And no meetings in, in November. 